Folks, welcome to an all new So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey. This is your buddy Ryan, and this is your Friday mega episode or episodes Vanderpump Palooza. We are doing this once again. We are inching so close to that finish line. Can you taste it? Can you feel it? It cannot come soon enough. So let's just enjoy this. While we have Vanderpump Rules Season 10 still on, we can enjoy this while it ekes out the last bit of excitement and pain from us, and then we can we can vanish it from our existence for at least like a month. I'm sure those will be rumors the entire time that they're filming, but we, we do not have to live in Scandaval. We only have to live in it for like two more weeks. We have next week's episode and we have the Secrets Revealed episode, which I'm telling you, Bravo, I'm warning you once again, if you do a Secrets Revealed and you do another intense secret on an actual Secrets Revealed episode, I'm going to literally poop myself, period. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, hello, you can see that I'm wearing the very dark glasses because I'm imitating Tom Sandoval's look, dude. Yeah, I feel deeply, dude. I'm in mourning. I'm dressing for a funeral at this reunion, dude. He has these big Terminator glasses on and he has those white nails and he's all like in this like black trench coat and like a black suit, but he changes out of the black suit when he's on break and he puts on a black t-shirt, which is, you know, still a change. And uh, it's just very intense. And then when he goes into Raquel's tray, oh, we're going to get into every one of those moments. So how are you guys doing before we start, before we get into this potential marathon of talking about these folks? Are you at your capacity? Are you there yet? I will say this. I woke up today. So I woke up on Wednesday morning and I have to tell you, I was like, I think I'm over this. <laughs> I think I think I'm good. I think I've I've hit my and then of course, you know, the day went on and I was I was okay and I got back into it. But I I there was like an hour or two where I was like, I don't think I like talking about these people anymore. Don't worry. It was just a moment of weakness. I am back. I am charged up. I am ready to go with you on this journey. Um, but I hope you guys are still enjoying these. Thank you so much for being here for this, for listening, for watching all of these things. Um, I've always been proud of this show, So Bad It's Good, and the people that helped me with this show. I am so proud of what I and what we have created over these last couple of years. And it is so nice I, you know, listen, Scandaball is horrible, right? It's horrible. It's awful because it is, it is mired in human pain, you know, and there's some people in this that we really, really genuinely care for and like, and we've grown to care for and like over 10 season, uh, 10 seasons on a reality show. But it, it's been, um, I hate to say rewarding, but it's been so rewarding to be able to be one of the voices that you guys actually will tune in for or listen to. And I think that, I mean, that's just incredible. And I have to reconcile that sometimes of like, oh, you know, certain good things are happening for this show and so many new people are coming to it. But at the same time, gosh, I wish none of this had happened. You know, does that make sense? I sometimes like, ooh, not the way you want. But what's been great is that we've been doing this all along. You know, we've been here all along and we're going to be here way past this season of Vanderpump Rules. So make sure you stay with us. And that's why I'll say off the top, make sure you're subscribed to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. That way, whatever we do, it shows up right there. You can follow us on Instagram at so bad. It's good with Ryan Bailey and the YouTube, which we've really kind of put a lot more effort to in these last couple of months. Uh, so bad. It's good with Ryan Bailey. And that it's really cool. That Katie Maloney interview that I just did on Wednesday, that's over on the YouTube. If you want to see Gordo and butters, her, her two beautiful dogs, um, it's all over there. So you can get a visual as well as, you know, the audio unless you're just a podcasting freak like I am. And I never like to sometimes watch the things. I just like to listen to them, but it's there. It's like Burger King. We do it your way. Um, <laughs> so, well, yeah, that was the other thing. And if you like all this hard work or if you get some enjoyment out of it, please consider leaving a five-star review on Apple podcasts and Spotify. Um, uh, I hate it's Like I'm singing like, please, sir, more porridge, please. A five-star review, please. But I have to tell you, that really helps. And, and I remind you to do that for every podcast that you listen to, especially new ones. If you like them, give them a five star to help them kind of build their brand or build what they're trying to do. I was talking um, uh, the, the, the people behind Facetune, the app. Yeah, 
uh, Charlie, who runs all their socials and stuff, she they're doing a Facetune podcast, and I was a guest this week. I don't know when it's going to come out, and we were talking at the very end about advice for podcasters. And I was like, I have never, I mean, I've felt old so many times lately, but I never had felt so old when I was giving advice for other podcasters um, or other creatives. And, and I just, um, you know, I'll have a lot of people reach out about like, Oh, what should I, what should I do? Which is so funny. You're like, I mean, I remember a couple of years ago when I was like, what do I do? What do I do? But the thing that I was saying is come from a place of passion always, right? Like that's what we're doing here. We're coming from this place. We're communing about something that we're very passionate about. Have a, a take on it. Don't just be just somebody that's like, well, I think this have your opinion. And, and if people agree with that, great. Now you're, you're so lucky that, in my case, I'm always right. So that, so you're, you're really lucky in that sense that I will not steer you wrong. If you hear a Ryan Bailey opinion, you know, it's right. I'm kidding. Calm down. Um, but have a take on something and just don't give up and don't expect any of this to be glamorous and do it for yourself. Don't expect anything to come from it. And then it, when things do, it's like this nice, pleasant surprise. And it's really, that's exciting. And all that hard work you put into it eventually pays off, but it, it's a long road. Um, and I was thinking about that just in terms of these Vanderpump Rules kids, 10 seasons in, when they started this, you know, they didn't realize that all of the horrible things that they did to each other in their late twenties and their thirties would carry on into their thirties and forties. <laughs> they, they never thought that in 10 seasons later, they would be doing potentially worse things to each other. And that's the thing. That's the, that's the, that's the foundation for this show. And when it works and when it works in reality shows is the foundation of pain. And that's a button you can keep going back to. And us as an audience will just be drawn to it like this big, bright, shining light. You're like, oh, pain. I see the pain. And it doesn't matter if the show sucked for the last two seasons. It immediately snaps us back into focus. And then it's kind of done this amazing thing where it goes back and makes us appreciate every other moment, every other season, even the big one, even the, sorry, even the bad ones, even the ones with dog, the lizard. Now I'm like, ah, oh, man, thank God dog isn't alive to, to see this. Thank God that lizard isn't alive. 2019 to 2019. Rest in peace, big dog. Um, but you, you, you look back with fondness. And I'm curious how we will look back about Scandable five years from now, four years from now, three years from now, next season. How will we look back? What will the history books, and by history books, I mean the Daily Mail, what will they say about Scandable? Because it truly has taken on a life of its own. And we've ridden this way for three months. I mean, this has been obsessive for me for three months. And I will tell you, it came at the exact right time. And it came at the exact right time for a lot of us. And I swear to God, I'm not going to get DJ James Kennedy and cry, Lisa, Lisa, no, no, Lisa, which we'll get to that moment in a bit. But it came at the right moment for me. And I, I've talked to a lot of you guys and for you as well, because we have our own lives, right? We have our own things that are happening around us that are hard to deal with, hard to understand, hard to process. And when you can actually jump into somebody else's pain boots or, you know, get entertainment or derive entertainment or turn off that little piece of your brain. That's like, how do I get through my own life? I mean, that's to be rewarded. It's to be celebrated. But this, I remember three months ago, it just, it was so amazing. Cause I, you know, I've been dealing with this and you guys know, if you've listened, you know, I'm, with my mom, things that are happening and, and, um, you know, and I, and I say this for, you know, I know Maritza's mom, I know Sandra's had, I mean, we've all had this, it's been such a morbid 2023. We've just really, there's been this sense. And I, and I think that is part in, I was talking to Sophie Ross, who uh, is sometimes my Monday co-host for the pop culture roundup. And she was talking about all the weddings she was going to. And I, I mentioned this before, but I just keep thinking about that. She was like, Oh, me and my guy are going to so many weddings. We have so many out of town weddings and going to this. And I was like, wow, I, I don't have any of those. And then I realized, Oh, wow, I'm a different, I, I'm, I'm older than Sophie. So my wedding days of being invited as a wedding guest are potentially happened in the past. And now I'm at this phase. I was, I was talking with my mom, um, you know, and, and those conversations could be really sad sometimes, even though she's amazing. But, you know, I'm processing and I'm have my own narcissistic tendencies. And, you know, she was talking about like, listen, we, you know, we're at that age, you know, life, life happens, life goes on. We're, we're all, 
we're all, you know, the, the circle of life, not to be all Lion King about it. And she was just always making that point of this is what happens. This is how life goes. Um, and to that point, really quickly, I wanted to thank uh, Jen Heater, who sent me this beautiful hat, this F cancer hat. Uh, I, I, that's what I, I wanted to say. Thank you so much. This came in the mail. First off, I didn't realize who had sent it. And, and that's always scary when you get an F cancer hat in the mail and you're like, I have no clue who sent this. So Jen, thank you so much. Um, I, I thought that was beautiful. And that is my sentiment completely F cancer. It's going to get fun here in a sec, folks. I, I really, I promise, but F cancer, but for me, this last three months has been so, um, I wouldn't say healthy, but I would say it was nice to be obsessed about something other than my family or other than my own feelings, my own bullshit, my own emo-ness, my own like Drake writing a, a take care album about like, uh, I'm running through the six with my woes. Like I get to think about these people and their misery and how people can do horrible things to the people that they say that they love. And that is, these are real questions and it's packaged up in this very bright, silly, very like, you know, you see DJ, James, hear DJ James Kennedy talk about things and you're like, this guy is so funny. Look at this cute little weirdo. He's just saying things and like, whoa, with a mustache. It's amazing. It really does help you forget. It helps you uh, commiserate. It, it, it puts a smile on your face, even through all of the pain. So that's what I want to do today. And that's what I, I've always wanted to do with this. So that's the uh, the mopey part of this. So let's get to the fun part of it. What did you think? We had part two of the reunion. Now, this is going to be a recap of the supersized Peacock recap. I mean, Peacock show. They added, I think, an extra seven minutes this week. Last week, they added close to 10. So this week, it was only seven. But what a seven minutes those were. I said this last week, uh, and and by the way, kick the kids out of the room at this point, or just throw them out of the car, or just you know, uh, hurt, just cuff their ears. Is is uh, fucking a dude? I fucking love when they fucking cuss, and it makes me feel like a fucking badass. I now I want them to smoke cigarettes during it. I want to get so like, listen, we have Schwartz bringing out huge bottles of Xanax. Hell yeah, this ain't your parents' Vanderpump rules. This is sexy. This <laughs> is Vanderpump Rules after dark. We're cursing, we're smoking, we're wearing all black like Tom and Raquel. Are you kidding me? Hell yeah, brother. High five. Nope. Okay. I love these supersized ones because it's not enough for me to hear the beep, beep. I want to hear the real word. And for some reason, that real word, word just like it's, you're like, whoa, Andy just said an, Andy said a curse. Andy said a curse word. We need a swear jar. Andy, put it on the swear jar. It's so exciting. So we have that. This is going to be... So by the way, I would highly recommend getting Peacock, the streaming service. But if you don't, let me be your Peacock guide. Like, by the way, just Venmo us a couple bucks and I'm just going to give you all the scenes. We'll do most of the voices. And to that note, just a fair warning, even though I feel like you know where you are at this point, you in the jungle, baby, is that I am going to um, do voices. You know, some of you guys find the Raquel voice disturbing, as it should be. It should be disturbing to you guys. You should feel potential anger. But I'm going to do those voices. It might not be your thing. Totally get it. You can move on. No offense taken and, and no offense to you. This is for us. And I just personally like doing that. And also, we're going to go into the minutia. We're going to talk about it from a behavioral standpoint, which um, I've had so many great guests on this last couple of weeks. I was just thinking of Lauren Clayton, who the behavioral therapist that came on. I think we had that last week, which you know gives us a little bit more of a language to talk about these things in a different way and just talk about narcissistic uh, abuse and qualities. And I know we can't diagnose people, but man. I mean, the overarching theme for this is, for me, the second part is Sheena's a really good friend in a lot of different ways. She might be overly emotional, but a really solid friend. And I think that is a very interesting thing to highlight. I think that's really worth noting is that you might find her this and this and this, but really here's somebody that will, that will like, you know, put themselves out for their friends. I mean, truly, we'll make, we'll sometimes just where she's having to apologize for going so hard for Raquel. And uh, this is something that I can't do. I wish there was a computer program. I feel like this is what we should use AI for responsibly is 
I need to go back and listen, or maybe one of you guys can go back and listen to that Sheena podcast I did because it was right before their Watch What Happens Live with Raquel. And I know in that I I'd fed her a couple of questions. I don't mean fed her in terms of like she asked me to ask her, but I mean, I know that I want her to talk about Raquel. So I asked her about her relationship with Raquel. I'd be interested in going back now. And because I remember her once again saying like, yeah, Raquel's great. Raquel's great. But also she's ride or die for Ariana as well. And she seems to be that person that has those tough conversations, like on the finale at the end with Sandoval of like, I can't be your friend anymore. This isn't good for me. And we do see the toll that it's taken with the restraining order, all of that stuff. So I think this was Sheena's hour in a lot of ways, the disappointment of it. And I talked to you guys about this last week that we would be eventually disappointed in this because it's the middle episode. We're in the weeds a little bit. How do we come back? to the Ariana Tom, bam, let's get into it. Now, everything is touching Scandaval. Even if you talk about Randall, which we did in this episode, even if you talk about DJ James Kennedy's a homeowner, yes, it all comes back to Scandaval. Now, would I love more focus on Katie and Schwartz's marriage? Yes. Yes, I would, but we're not going to get that. And that's another thing. That's why I was so happy to have Katie on this week. But I said that to her and I said that to you guys is I want her on again immediately because I didn't have a, I had a thousand more questions and uh, I hope Katie had uh, not a good, I don't think how you would have a good time talking about all this shit, but I hope she will come on again. So if you liked that interview, reach out to her and say, you liked it, reach out and say, you, you know, you, you, she did. I thought she did good. I thought she was, it, it was really exciting for me in this show. And I hope, I hope I did good for her. Um, and I hope to get to talk to her again, because I feel like still we're overlooking, overlooking elements of that relationship because we have this new shiny bobble that's amazing and huge and horrible, but it's the new thing when we would have had a whole reunion episode, if we had ended at the finale with uh, Katie's mom and the Tom Tom thing where Raquel's out there by the gas tanks in the Sur Alley, we would have had a whole episode talking about their relationship. And I feel like that was robbed of us in a certain way. And I don't mean robbed, but it would have been nice to have a little more context, to have a little more conversation. And, you know, they the cameras were down when, they're, when they made that decision to actually get divorced. And, and I think that's respect. I mean, cameras really were down but at the same time, I think we all would have been very curious to see those moments before and the moments directly after. And I think Schwartz is that person that rides on the fence. There's a lot of things about Schwartz I don't like. There's a lot of things about Schwartz I don't like because I see elements of that in myself at times about the inability sometimes to face tough things or to like, I like everybody. And it's a really hard place to be. Um it's hard for other people. I mean, not, it's a, not a hard place for him. It's a hard place for other people around him to sometimes have to deal with that. Um, but I, I do think they both loved each other. They just couldn't love each other in the way that each other, like, you know, the way Schwartz did love Katie is not the way that Katie needed to be loved. You know, there's all different times of love and it just seems like their love languages completely did not complement each other. Um, so I would have liked more of that. So you had the Sheena stuff, of course, but then the Raquel thing. We don't get any more clarification than we did last week. Still a masterful use of Raquel in the trailer, but it is becoming darker and darker each week in terms of just, you know, don't, don't expect much next week. Because there is nothing going on. This girl cried the hardest I've seen her cry in her entirety of Vanderpump Rules when she told Peter that she was sad her um, her beauty pageant career was over and that she was very lost and that she actually had a breakdown with Peter. Like, by the way, maybe Peter is the Raquel Whisperer. Let's get Peter in here, get her to actually open up and have some emotions. But that is it. Everything else is steel faced. And I know we can't diagnose people. I know, I know, I know. But you guys, I there's something, there's something more. There's something, there's something happening. There just has to be. There just has to be. I know it's easy to be like, well, she's just fucking evil. And there are elements to that, of course. 
yes, this is a very evil thing. And by it, and, and I'm not going to get into this conversation yet because I'm really curious to see what happens next week. And then potentially when Raquel does resurface, but there is something there because I don't think even in those conversations in, you know, at the very last scene, she's like, it's making me rethink things and kind of like, I guess I'm not, I'm thinking about it now. And I was like, wow, you're thinking about it now. You haven't thought about it up to this point about how Sheena's felt about this. And I thought that was very interesting in how her mind works in how she processes information and the emotional output, because we there's moments where you see on the preview for uh, episode three where Sandoval's like, hoo, 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 and that could be half performance, half real. And they're going around. Everybody looks in pain. And then they get to Raquel and she's like, like just out, just gone, just gone, not there. It's like, is anybody home? Is anybody home? That's not on purpose. There's got to be something there. And the reason why I think there's got to be something there, because she's been like that for the entire five years she's been on this show. It's always been that. Bambi-eyed bitch. What's going on in there? Use your brain. Think. And we always like kind of shove it off of like, this person wasn't smart. Like Lala was always like, you're not educated. And that really made Raquel upset in the Raquel way of like, I am educated, Lala. But there's something else going on. The thing that I am curious about, I keep thinking, is that if there is some sort of diagnosis down the line with her or a, an explanation a little bit about how she emotionally processes things, are we going, I mean, it's going to be interesting because I just, like, I got that feeling immediately from her when I would like hang out with her the handful of times. I'd be like, I, I told you guys every week, I tell you guys, I'm just like, nothing was there. She was super nice. But I was like, do you know what's happening? Like, it wasn't dumb. It was just vacant. And I just wonder now, and I wish, I hope Andy potentially asks of like, Ariana, when you hung out with uh, Raquel, what did you guys all think? Did you, I mean, is it one of those things that she was a mirror for everybody, even the girls? Like Sheena was, it, it felt good for Sheena because Sheena could kind of mother her in a way and kind of show her the ropes of reality show stardom. And it made Sheena feel good. But how did, how did Sheena view Raquel? How did Ariana grew, uh, you know, gauge Raquel? It just felt like she was like quiet and sweet. But I wonder if they ever thought the way things that I did, that she's completely vacant. Like, do you understand what's happening right now? And if there is some sort of diagnosis down the line, I'll be curious to hear all of the cast's reactions to that. Um, okay. Um, are you ready to, um, okay, let's just start into this and we'll see how we, how we go. Remember, this is part one, the recap part two, I'm going to cover all of the, there's so many Vanderpump rules pods now. And I don't mean from us, I mean, from actual cast members and they reveal little pieces of information. So we'll go through it. It, it probably, I always say this, it shouldn't be that, it shouldn't be that long folks, but remember these, listen to them at your leisure. Like, you know, listen to them all, listen to them one, listen to both, listen to neither. It's all gravy. So here we go. May 31st, 2023, the year of our Lord, Vanderpump Rules, season 10, episode 17, the reunion, part two. Now, right off the bat, folks, I, you know, I got to tell you, the, the, the music started and I was like, I don't think Tom and Ariana are going to make it. I just, I don't think they're going to get back together at this point. <laughs> Isn't that wild though? Most people that get busted cheating this much, they usually beg for the person to come back. I'm like, I can change. Are you kidding me, dude? No. Like there was no hope. So that has never been on the table of like, I'll change. I made these mistakes. Like that's never been like Tom needs his mojo. You dude, my mojo, dude, my mojo. Now, remember, I'm going to stay strong with the philosophy or the what I said last week, that this is reverse engineering cheating. This is Tom cheating and then having to come up with a bunch of reasons why he actually cheated. So his reality all of a sudden, you know, he's like, oh, dude, she made fun of me. She made fun of my dress. She thought I was an idiot. Like you all of a sudden woke up and decided to be, to be honest about this. I think you took those things that mildly annoyed you in a relationship because we all have them in relationships and you blew them up. Once you realized you were in a full blown cheating relationship, you're like, okay, uh, let's go to the drawing board. Okay. What has annoyed me about Ariana in the past? Does that have legs? Can we, can we make that work? 
Okay, we can make that work. Yeah. Okay, the stupid thing. Nobody likes to be called stupid, right? And Schwartz is like, yeah, I never like to be called stupid. Good one, Tom. It, it is working backwards, and that's why I think it is completely unfulfilling and doesn't make a lot of sense. It just rings false a lot of the times. And I'm not saying that Tom is not doesn't feel that he's in the hot seat and Tom isn't feeling, but there is this thing of he is trying to self-preserve at this. There is a self-preservation thing that is kicked in and all of these different tactics are not working. I mean, hell, yeah, at one point towards the end, he goes out to have a little Diet Coke smoke break and he's like, you're blow I'm blowing it, blowing it, dude, blowing it. And, you know, there's a couple of things that Tom says under his breath. He also says green light, green light at the end, which we'll go over. There's a lot of stuff that could be up for interpretation that we will never fully know the truth. So we can only theorize. But, hey, you're in. we love to theorize here. It's so bad. It's good. So this is what the cable company gives us if we were the casual viewer saying, "Hun, what do you want to watch tonight? Like, well, uh, what does this show Vanderpump Rules say it's about? It says Andy Cohen presses Sheena for details of the altercation that led to Raquel's restraining order. The group debates the origins of the open relationship rumor. Raquel must face the group for the first time since news of the affair became public. Now, if you were a, a casual viewer, if you didn't know about Vanderpump Rules, would this entice you? Would you be like, "Hun, we are watching this reunion part two because I heard, o I saw open relationship and I'm like, I need to know more about that. Um, oh, you guys, I, um, I've been half watching, which means like watching, but on my phone, what is it? It, it, it on HBO max or what we call max. Now it is about, what is it? The curious case of not Benjamin button, but Natalia grace. Did you guys see this? She's a little person that supposedly was adopted from Ukraine and comes to this family. But then they, uh, they think she's actually, um, uh, she's actually a grown woman. And she had like had her period. And I don't know why I'm being quiet when I say period, but she had her period and she had pubic hair. But then they were like, is she actually a bit like five years old or is she actually a grown woman? And the family was saying like she was trying to kill, like it, it was bizarre. But then the actual family falls apart that adopted her. And then you realize the family's weird. It's like a six part series on Max, HBO Max. And it it's really st st stuck with me. Which is that you don't want to cross the streams like they say in Ghostbusters. Don't cross the streams. And when you're watching Vanderpump Rules this intensely and then you put something in like Natalia Grace, it really, on, on the heels of a succession finale, whew, hard stuff, you guys. Having really hardcore dreams lately. <laughs> but I don't know. It was I, I might have to cover that at some point or talk about it because, wow. Which, by the way, uh, Tuesday's episode, I believe it, Tuesday or Wednesday, Tuesday's episode, I talked about the succession finale and I also gave my tribute to Tina Turner. I'm really proud of that episode. So give it a listen. Uh, it's a little bit of not, it's a little off center of what we usually do, but I like covering all pop culture and I was really happy with that solo episode. So we are back at Avenue six studios is the studios where they're shooting this reunion. I do want to mention really quickly that, it is a soundstage studio, but when they're inside, mm -hmm. I want to know what else they're filming there because when DJ James Kennedy runs off to tinkle every 30 seconds, it looks like he's going through like an Ikea house set. <laughs> it's, like, it's like an Ikea door. And like a really, like the if you look backstage at the back, it's like these weird sets where I'm like, where the fuck are they? Are they, are they shooting Seventh Heaven on this set? Rest in peace, Seventh Heaven. Uh, we hear Andy's uh, voiceover tonight. Part two of the Vanderbilt Rules reunions. And this is where we get previews of like the little clips we'll see. So I'm going to burn through these really quick. And we see Andy. Was like, Sheena, what is the latest on the restraining order? We have a court date on the 29th. Did you punch her? I just, and then Sandoval's like, she goes, I just punched that bitch in the face. And then Sheena yelling at Sandoval, keep your fucking mouth shut. Stop. And then Schwartz goes, she has a long history of diminishing my friendships. And Katie's like, you're friends with everyone. You're like a serial killer's wet dream. And then Sandoval in Raquel's trailer is like, they're making you out to be and me basically pathological liars. And Raquel's like, I know, even though. We know that we're not, which we'll get into that moment. And then another scene with Sandoval's like, I don't smack girls on the ass. And James is like, I don't go slapping girls on the ass. And Ariana's like, you just fuck them, Tom. And Sandoval's like, you get out of jail free card for everything. And James is like, yeah, it's the card this year, you mustached prick, pussy ass bitch. 
and James runs off stage. It would have the only way these runoffs would be better if he ran off in tears every time. Like, you pussy ass bitch. Uh, uh. <laughs> and Lisa's like, excuse me, nigga lane. And James yells, you mustache one bitch. Sandoval in Raquel's trailer. Ariana's going to unleash on you, dude. They make it sound like it's one of those Marvel superhero movies of like, you're going to have to face Ultron. Yeah, Ultron's going to come for you. But you need to get that silly looking glove with all of the rings. I know I'm getting this character's name wrong. It's not Ultron, but it's something like, you know what I'm saying? If they act like this is like completely like, you better be prepared for hell to rain fire down on you, Raquel. Then we go to Andy to Raquel's one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, how did you envision this was going to play out with Ariana? Did you think there was a path forward for the two of you? And uh, then it's Raquel's turn. She, we see her walking on stage to her seat. Crick, 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 little <laughs> deathly, like just dead silence. And Ariana will not look at her. And Andy goes, hi, Raquel. And Raquel goes, hi, Andy. This is where we pick up where we left off last week. Lala goes, you're sitting there knowing you were fucking her behind everybody's back. And little Lala is like, yeah, bitch. And Sandoval's like, I know that. And James is like, boo. And Sandoval's like, I know that. Dude, I know that. And Lala's pointing her like taloned finger, the very interesting, um, whatever the nail, the nails, just very like, I don't, whatever you fucking call doing the nails, the pedicure, manicure. Oh my God, Ryan, you're losing it. Fucking manicure. Lala's like, you have the balls to say, get accountability, Katie. Lala, you got to share your life. Sandoval, I know that. I am taking accountability, yo. You are not. And Lala is like, for what? What did I do? And Lala, at this moment, if you look at the face in this, she's like, she looks like she is having the time of her life. She's like, what? What did I do? What do you? Her eyes are ablaze and she has this like wicked smile. And this is where it confuses me because this is we Sandoval says this thing and he goes, I fart Mozart, everybody. I had trouble at with the, he, you know, he's a serial killer's wet dream. That line from Katie to Schwartz, which I think I understand it now. I still don't get the, I fart Mozart, everybody. Is that just saying that everything that comes out of Lala's mouth is a work of art or, and this is just a darker thought. Did Mozart make a lot of fart music? Was it like, <laughs> by the way, this little bit I'm doing right now is for all the four-year-olds out there. So shout out to all you four-year-olds. Put them up to the screen. <laughs> no, what is that? <laughs> what if Mozart was, he was really like, you know, his music was good, but have you, have you heard the fart symphonies? Like it was next level. Um, Lisa's like, la la, sometimes you're pretty aggressive. And Santa was like, exactly, Lisa. And Lala to Lisa goes, you got to stop. You got to stop, yo. And James is like, you're sticking up for Tom too much. I'm not sticking up for Tom. She's being reasonable, you guys. And Lala's like, you got to stop. And Lisa's like, I've got to stop. I'm talking to you. And James is like, reasonable. No, no, that ain't. And James suddenly jumps up from his chair like a whirling dervish and walks off set. And Andy's like, hey, James. Sit down, James. Are you? And James is like, oh, I'm not going to listen to this shit. And Andy goes, hold on. No, come back. Come back. Backstage, James is walking through the Ikea set of whatever weird home set this is. It's like a miniature house. It's so weird, you guys. And James mutters, this fucking guy, man. This fucking guy. And producer Jeremiah, he's wearing the face mask and he has the... The, the the Janet Jackson microphone so he can communicate with people. He's in a nice little dapper suit for the day. And Jeremiah, you can tell, is like, why are you keep – like, even Jeremiah's like, dude, why are you back here again? But he's like, you all right? Because you can tell this is not planned. So he's like, uh, wait, why are you back here again? And Jim's like, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. We're back on the set. And Lala's like, I'm going to tell you we will not be discussing this. And Sandoval goes, she's a fucking narcissist, dude. She's a – I will say this for myself. We Screw the swear jar. Fuck that. We need a narcissist jar. Every time we invoke the word narcissist, narcissist, narcissism. I mean, let's even throw gaslighting in there. Let's throw all the big $10 psych words. And, you know, like Sandoval, sorry, we're going to have to charge you 10 bucks for that. And Lala goes, I have an ego the size of this building, but I ain't a narcissist. And little Lala's like, I've got a pussy the size of this building. Yo, woo. And Sandoval goes, yeah, it has a lot to do with that, Lala. And Lala goes, has nothing to do with it. And Sandoval, goes, yeah, it does. 
And then Lala goes, no, it doesn't, you moron. And then Sandoval goes, you're a fucking moron, dude. I will say the way Sandoval argues back is it's very Sanford Meisner. That's a shout out to all of you actors out there is he just repeats back what you say. So he, we see two examples of it right here. Um, you know, is, uh, you know, yeah, it has a lot to do with it. it has nothing to do with it. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. You moron. You're a fucking moron. It's just, it's very childlike, but this is where it's not childlike. Sandoval hits us with this under his breath. He goes, Pulled your IUD the day you found out Thothy was pregnant, dude. <sighs> now, we found out from Lala, thank God, that she did not hear this because it would have probably taken 30 minutes to uh, disattach those talon claws from Sandoval's neck. But basically, Sandoval is saying, you know, a really shitty thing of like, once you found out Thothy was pregnant, you pulled your ID IUD so you could get pregnant. It's just a really shitty thing. Now, I do want to point out just in the vernacular, that's a pretty well, uh, it's a horrible thing to say, but it is a put together thing to say. And what I mean by that is that's a planned line. That is a line that Sandoval has had in his, in his old noggin for a little bit, because you just don't, that's not a, like Lala and James are good with off the cuff ones like that, but Sandoval isn't. So I'm willing to bet dollars to donuts that that is a line that he has had you know, I, I bet he's used that in conversations before. And you know, I'm right. I, I mean, that is completely what happened here. Um, okay. So I do want to play uh, as we go along here. I'll try to throw some social media into this as well, because Lala does love responding to, uh, to what has just, just happened. Oh, wait, did she, did she remove this already? Oh, shit. Wait, where did this girl? Okay. Um, da, da, da. okay, where is Lala? Oh my god, did she remove? Oh, wait, here we go. It's the second time that I have seen Sandoval diminish the conception of my beautiful, magical daughter. I'm disgusted, makes me sit here and question who the fuck raised you and how they must be sitting there going, Do we really got to claim this fucking guy? Really? I'm so glad that I did not hear that at the reunion because I'm telling you what, these mom. Um, so wait, so obviously uh, she is triggered by this. I think she does talk about um, she she does talk about her baby being magical. And I think uh, I think that is amazing. She goes on to say in another story. Thinking more on Sandoval's disgusting comment about the IUD. First of all, you you don't come with me to the Punani doctor. How the fuck you know when my <laughs> IUD is removed, when it's put in? This is my body, you fucking clown. He is a misogynistic prick disguised in fucking neon eyeliner and a set of white gels, which he ruined for everyone. Now you got people like OPI out in these streets trying to be like, how do we save the white nail polish supply? <laughs> Fuck. Maybe I'll get white nails and convince Ariana and Katie and Sheena to all get white nails. We're taking it back. We're taking back the white nails. You buffoon. You clown. You sorry excuse for a human. Oh my God. Listen, I... I don't, I think domineering, she could be a professional dominatrix. Are you, you would just have her humiliate you. She's so good at that. That's why I think she will be really good. Like she'll continue to succeed in podcasting, even after all the Vanderpump hoopla goes off because I mean, but you got to get her activated like that. Now, Punani doctor is a great turn of, uh, it's a great verbiage. And then I was just like, little Lala needed to be like, don't fucking talk to me. Don't talk about me, bitch. I'm little Lala. You don't talk about me. When the IUD came out, it was personal and it was beautiful. Fuck you. Little Lala, of course, if you're just listening for the first time, is throughout the recaps, I had given a character to Lala's private parts called Little Lala because Lala really likes to get heavily sexual. We saw in the Lake Havasu when her and Don supposedly ruined a mattress and just soaked that thing and then uh, Katie probably didn't get that security deposit back, which damn it. That's another question I would have asked Katie is why did, did you get your security back for that Lake Havasu place? 
I guess I'll never know now unless I talk to her again. Anyways, that was Lala uh, hitting hard back at Sandoval. So we're back in this. Uh, we're backstage again. And remember, DJ James Kennedy went off. And James is like, I'm getting a little nervous. And it's like every time I listen to Tom, I'm, I am I keep getting angry. And then I keep having to go pee. And then Jeremiah's like, okay, okay. Um, are you okay? Now, a lot of people are like, oh, was James off there? Was he out there like doing pasta? Was it guys... I don't think that's it. I think what it is, is he just gets so riled up and he is that ADHD can't sit still. I'm not defending DJ James Kennedy because it is annoying for him to keep getting up. But I think he has so many feelings uh, involved in this that he will never actually deal with in therapy that that is what is causing that. I think he is just truly running. He's I, I mean, I will eat. Uh, I will eat uh, a bottle of white nail polish if I'm wrong, but I don't think he's in there like, you know, doing weird things because they, you don't want to get more hyper when you're in the midst of something like this. If anything, I want more of Schwartz's Xanax and that would be something to, to deal with. So James is coming back out and uh, which, oh, that's the other thing. It's too late now. Oh, every one of my ideas it's like too late for is that I would... For my reality show museum, I would have been willing to buy some of DJ James Kennedy's reunion pee. Go, I know it's just okay. Like you wouldn't buy it. Are you kidding me? Just a little, you know, it, it might cure your gout or like cirrhosis of the lip. Like it could cure something. It's like holy water. DJ James Kennedy's reunion pee of like every of the 30 times he went up to tinkle. You're telling me that's not going to fly off the shelf. Fuck, send it to Daryl shirts. You got some of that DJ James Kennedy reunion tea, a reunion pee. That's what I want. I'd be willing to pay top dollar too. Obviously, I will be visiting a mental health facility as well soon. So expect my post postcards from the desert. So uh, James returning. He's like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And he smiles that James has returned and sits in his chair. And James is like, Lisa, I'm sorry, Lisa. I love you, Andy. I'm so sorry, mate. And Andy just goes, just stay in your fucking chair, okay? Honestly. And James is like, sorry. And Andy goes, okay, Lala, I want to switch gears and talk about you and Randall. We first heard about you and Randall splitting up at last year's reunion, which was over a year ago. When was the last time? When was the, la when was the last time? <laughs> Sorry. When was the last time that you, you spoke face-to-face? -face? And Lala goes, well, we've never spoken face-to-face. -face. He brought Ocean up the driveway the other day because the nanny was sick, and I just grabbed her and I put her in the car seat. Which, think about that scene. Those are the scenes, and I know Lala has her character that is, I mean, it's her, but it's, it's a high, you know, but that, to me, that's the shit that, that's going to put hair on your chest. Like, I think about that moment. Imagine if reality show cameras had caught that. Of just because that, those are the moments, you know, Lala was on briefly last week because I'd asked her a question and she was nice enough to send a voice note about Sandoval being, you know, it wasn't scared going into the reunion. But I wonder in those moments, and I know she has to be tough and this whole exterior mama bear, all of that stuff. But I do wonder if that's the shit that you're like, oh, if, if, if that gets her, if that's oh, or if she's no, nope, fuck that. Like, I wonder and I don't know her enough to know, but that's that's what I would also wonder in those moments if if that like triggers her back to which by the way trigger that's a word that needs to go into that swear jar i was talking about i wonder if those are the moments she's like like inside internally she is like combusting because that to me would be scary because randall you know like he's like i don't fucking care i'll fucking see your face i want to make her nervous you, you get that vibe right um so uh and he goes we didn't see ocean on the show at all this season lala's daughter was that by design and lala's like yeah she uh she asked she demanded way too much money wise she ocean really ocean was asking for more than Stassi did at her height. No, so she goes, yeah, he sent a legal letter that she was not allowed to be on camera. You can't use pictures, no videos, no nothing. And Andy goes, which by the way, so shitty. Cause that gets her where it hurts. And of course you're like, Oh, as a father, blah, blah, blah. But like bullshit. How can this guy go out being like, you know, asking for nudes from every, every lady in the fucking, you know, multi-universe, but like she, you know, it's like this guy's riding like out there in the streets being a weirdo, like drugs, sex, everything, money. But um, but it's but well, let's not show the kid. Let's not show the kid. Now, I do understand elements of that, of like you don't want to raise more Kardashians, even though I think some of these. 
people might argue of like you do, but yeah, I see that. But at the same time, I have a feeling this was a tactic to get back at Lala. Could be wrong. And he was right before the season started. The LA times published a bombshell article about Randall that accused him of oh, running a casting couch, having his assistants move drugs and laid out millions of dollars worth of lawsuits. Randall denied all the allegations through his spokesperson. And they flash up the headline, the man who played Hollywood inside Randall Emmett's crumbling empire. If you haven't read it, I think it is worth a read. Also, I wanted to remind people on Hulu, they have the Randall scandal that kind of dives into this article as well. But I think it is worth the read still, even if you watch that documentary. Also, I forgot this at the beginning. Juliana Carosa, she did all of the notes for this, even the supersized notes this time. So, Juliana, I'm so sorry I didn't bring that up in the beginning. I was just thinking, I'm just, I don't know why I started talking about Randall. And I was like, Juliana, I'm joking. Juliana Carosa has been amazing, you guys. Uh, and she, I've never met Juliana in my life, but she is truly, truly amazing. And, and, and I couldn't do this without her for this stuff. Okay, Lala's like, who, by the way, in regards to Randall, was also Harvey Weinstein's spokesperson. And uh, I think that's very important that you add that, which is just, you know, you know, somebody's doing bad stuff if they, uh, if, if Randall's like, can I get who Harvey had? I do want to also remind you that Harvey's going to be in jail probably for the rest of his life. Um, so not a good, you know, like, I don't know what these days, like, did lawyers go around like, hey, maybe you know, maybe we shouldn't talk about representing Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> like, you know, it's like the people that represent Epstein. Maybe we should, you know what? Let's keep that. Let's keep that on the low, you know, but let's, let's highlight these other clients who aren't fucking freaks. I'm on fire today. My God. Um, Andy says, well, did this come as a total shock to you? The story. And James is like, Jesus. And Lala was like, yes and no. My DM area was being flooded. Just like little Lala and Havasu with some pretty disturbing allegations. But the fact that like the LA times was going to be publishing some of those for the public to read, that was like, Oh shit. And Andy goes, did you meet his, him auditioning for one of his films? And Lala goes, no, I met him host a scene at sir. Now this is very interesting. So auditioning the film she he's talking about is called the vow. And it is, if uh, citizen Kane was completely shitty and it nothing like citizen Kane and it was straight to video. It was, that's the vow, but I've watched the vow a couple of times. It's not even so bad. It's good. It's sometimes just so bad and it's still bad. I, uh, uh, years ago, oh my God, this is right around election time, 2020 me and Troy McKitty on so bad. It's good. Troy McKitty from beyond the blinds. Um, we, we recapped the vow. So that is worth checking, man. I was thinking about that too. When I, I made that note. I was like, God, we've done so many cool shows on this and had so many great guests and so many laughs, but you just forget. You're like, oh my God, I have a whole episode like that. I, I wish we could go back and like, that's what I was talking about AI earlier. I just want to be, have an AI that knows every one of the podcasting things so I can put a search bar in and go, when did Ryan talk about this? And it, just all this shit would come up. But uh, The Vow is just this horrible uh, horror film that Randall Emmett Furla Films produced and it was different in the sense that Randall is called the king of the geezer teasers. That was an article, a headline on the article the Vulture article did on him a couple of years back before the LA Times. But basically, the way Emmett Furla pictures usually worked was that they would pay um, a geezer actor like a John Travolta, a Robert De Niro, an Al Pacino, or a Bruce Willis. They would pay them multi-million dollars. And at this point in their careers, they weren't getting those big paychecks like they were used to. So they would sign on to these little crappy piece of shit films. They would only have to shoot for a handful of days. I think De Niro was in one of his films a couple of years ago, and he only had to shoot five days. And I think he got something where north of like five million dollars. But then for a producer like Randall, what you can do is you can sell that like we've got a Robert De Niro film. You can sell it to overseas markets. You can sell it to like a uh, video on demand, a streaming, all of this stuff. And you make your money that back that way. So he's called the King of the geezer teasers, but he also did like low budget horror films. Um, and then, you know, in Randall, in Randall's case, he did uh was it American sniper? No, it was um, the Mark Wahlberg film that was about uh, war. I'm, I'm forgetting. Um, mm, I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting the uh, the actual title of that film, but it actually made a lot of money. 
Uh, it was it was deemed a good film. It was reviewed uh, uh, very well. And that was like there, there was potentially going to be a time a couple of years ago where he was starting to switch into good films. And he also helped produce. He was one of like 30 producers on The Irishman by Marty Scorsese that went straight to Netflix or it was a Netflix deal. But this was his dipping his toe into like the big waters. So you remember those photos of the Oscars back in the day when Lala and Randall went and there's like this great photo of Lala Randall and Brad Pitt because it was the year of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood came out and he was really trying to be that player. So he really with one fail swoop, it is a lesson in there for all of us men and women is that, you know, work hard, but don't be a creep because it can actually then the thing that you worked hard at, I assume that Randall did love movies at a certain point, it can completely destroy your career. Now, Hollywood is full of these like, you know, scrappers that are like, it's never over. I'll claw my way back to the top. And producers especially are like that because they kind of move mountains with very little. But when you're a creep on top of that, it just makes everything else so much harder and you have an extreme distaste for this person. It's like, you know, produce your shitty films, try to get to that the big leagues and producing good films, but then all of this other stuff you get like all caught up in. Sandoval is a very similar way because in, in a small scale is that he wanted that rock star lifestyle. He wanted his mojo back. He wanted to be having sex like a porn star, dude. He wanted those things. And it takes away from that overall person that he was or still is. You know, like, I don't believe that Sandoval is wall to wall evil. Like I would be, that would be ridiculous, but I believe in this last year, potentially way longer, something changed in him where he wanted something so much more. And he found by betraying some of his earlier ideals and morals and turning against or treating the people that he really loved very poorly to try to get this, this, and in that quest, when you do things in that wrong way, it, it doesn't work out. And that's there's a lesson in there. I, I'm pretty sure. I hate to like, I hate to use this show for good, but I think there's a lesson. Anyway, so Lala says talks about Randall being a huge fan of Vanderpump Rules. He's like, yeah, he sent his assistant up to me at Sir, and uh, Lisa's like, I thought you met him in an audition. Which, by the way, like Lisa, keep up. Like, how do, how do I know this? You fucking, this is your show. You, that's your place. You don't know that, that they met at sir. I find that really hard to believe. And Ariana's like, no, Randall was a fan. And Lala, yeah, he was a fan of the show. Huge, huge fan. I do want to remind people of this. This is another thing. I spoke with Lala on this podcast a couple of years ago during the pandemic. And this was when she was still with Randall. And I was being really nice about Randall. I was very complimentary towards him. And uh, I mentioned because I had listened to an episode of it used to be give them Lala and Randall. And I still have the old cover art for the it was horrible cover art because they had to do this like really weird caricature because it's hard to just put a picture of Randall up because he doesn't have a chin. And <laughs> I know that's a stupid sophomore joke, but so be it. But I will say this about money. I always like, how are you spending all this money on all of these things? And you're not building yourself an actual chin. Like you can build your, like, don't tell me that you can't put money into building a fortress of a chin. Like really? But anyways, they used to do the podcast together. Everybody said they liked it. What, whatever. And, uh, he talks about a story on there that he was obsessed with the show. He would call Bravo to try to get advanced copies. And he really allegedly said he was obsessed with this show, which is even darker when you think that then he came with the crew to Sir to pick up Lala. Because this guy, you know, he's a producer. He goes after things he wants. So I feel like this was all something. This was all his plan of like, I bet I can, I bet I can, I bet I can uh, land her. I bet I can. And he did. Um, and Lala goes, uh, do you have a manager? And Lisa's like, oh, somebody asked Lala if he had a manager and Lisa's like, he meant Peter. And everybody laughs. Lisa got a little joke in there and Lala like, and I went in for an audition and it was like, surprise, you got it. And Sandoval, we have a Sandoval cam and Sandoval makes a drastic, you know, a dry, sarcastic expression. Like, ugh. ugh. Okay, Lala. And Andy goes, was that when you started sleeping together? And Lala goes, no, that was December of 2015. And then we got together and James is like, you had sex the night you met him. And Lala goes, no, I didn't, James. That's what you told me. No, that's not true, James. Are you sure? I'm positive, James. And Lisa goes, yes, you did say I let him hit it in the first night, which is so fun to have Lisa Vanderpump say hit it. 
flashback to that scene in 2018 when her and Stasi are getting their hair did. And Lola goes, yeah, we went out, he went out with me and like two of my friends and I let him hit it the first night and we were inseparable. Stasi's mouth is like wide open. She's like the, the wide open mouth emoji. And Lala's like the first night we banged, I got, a, I got a car the next day. Cause she got a Rover. And Lala goes, I didn't mean the first time we met technically the first time we actually went out beyond a casting. So who knows what the timeline is of this. And I truly don't like to think about them having sex. So I don't know if I care. And he goes, did you feel like you had to sleep with him in exchange for getting the part? And Lala goes, you know, I actually did not me just being from Utah. I didn't realize that like Hollywood worked that way. I just had a fun time with him. Again, the camera pans the scan of all. He's like, oh, man. like he's just very nonplussed. And James is like, I knew Hollywood worked that way when I was like eight years old. I love that James is like, I knew, I knew how these streets of Hollywood, it's paved with gold, but it's riddled with shit, Andy. I knew as an eight-year-old asking for more porridge, and I would try to get little eight-year-old DJ DJ gigs. Little DJ James, oh, little DJ James <laughs> Little DJ James Kennedy. I was a top boy, Andy. I was working and hustling these streets of Hollywood. My. <laughs> I love that. I would go on castings. I would have little DJ parties with all my little elementary school friends. But it was tough, Andy. It was very hard in the streets of Hollywood, as me and the other young ones used to call it. Yes. So we knew. We knew to stay away from people like Randall. <laughs> uh, James is like, and then Katie smiles when James says this. And Lisa's like, he slept with Kristen to get on a television show. And James is like, no. And, and she's like, yes, you did. And James is like, no, I created my own story here, Lisa. And you should be thankful, honestly. You should be thanking me, the story I told on Vanderpump Rules. At least like, oh, I should be thankful. Excuse me. I've been your biggest support. And Santa was like, you told people that, James. Flashback to 2016, James in a reunion is like, to be honest, I was getting on the show regardless because I was either going to move in with Tom or start banging his ex-girlfriend. And we see a shot of Dodie kind of like, he. And Santa's like, we were going to move in together. And she started fucking him. Another one of my friends, which is another reminder of how really incestuous this group is and how these men, like these things keep happening in their lives, but not one of these guys seem to go make a mental note. This is horrible behavior. Do not do this. They're always like, where did I get that idea to like fuck somebody's friend? Maybe with DJ James Kennedy and what he did with me with Kristen? I don't know. Like none of these people have realized this was bad enough behavior. I think at this point with Scandal, it was so intense what this whole rigmarole the last three months that hopefully this is the sign that we need that none of these men will ever step out of line again. And James back in this reunion goes, I was 21 years old. Bloody hell. I'm 31 now. This guy's 41 and still making the same mistakes. James, DJ James Kennedy obsessed with age and weight. Bing. You, you, this guy, this guy loves talking about his age, loves talking about weight and th that's, and loves talking about his love for Sandoval. Lala's like, I obviously look back and know that there were red flags everywhere, but I feel like now I have 30,000, I have a 30,000 foot view on like life. If something seems too good to be true, it's because it is. I love that line. Unironic. Like I, I love that. Just even the verbiage of I have a 30,000 foot view on my life. And Andy's like, sobriety will do that. How many years have you been sober? And Lala goes, I'm just shy of four and a half years. And Andy goes, good for you. Good for you. And Lala's like, thank you. That really is incredible. Another question. I don't listen to Lala's podcast, but I get a lot of notes. Does she ever talk about being tempted still. Like, I don't know if she goes to meetings or, you know, but this is really kind of this amazing journey. I would, would say I listened to give them la la the audio book when I had her on the show and I liked it, but you know, I think there was part of it where I, I was like, yeah, of course this isn't going to be New York times bestseller yet. I mean, you haven't lived much of a life yet, but now, man, now, you know, I, I would imagine she's going to write a second book within the year. That would be my prediction or that would be my advice to her, which she's not asking for. But now is the shit I want to know about, like the Randall shit. The, I mean, this is like this is like I said, putting hair on your chest. These, these are like life's man. Life is handing it to you. Uh, a whole chapter about the dawn. Right. <laughs> so anyways, 
Um, this is an added scene from the Peacock version. And Andy's like, Schwartz, have you seen or spoken to Randall or spoken to him since you played pickleball with him? And Schwartz is like, I am not Andy. And Lala does a little pickleball motion. She's like, I will say pickleball. I don't know. Like the big, like it's like big pharma, big pickleball. Like, it seems like it's everywhere. Who is paying off people about this pickleball? Because it's on everybody's like, my sister was talking about it a couple weeks ago. I'm like, why is everybody like Ted, Freddie Mellencamp uh, plays pickleball. She was on the cover of pickleball weekly a couple years ago. And Randall is like, Randall was producing a documentary on pickleball. I will say this. Do you remember that pickleball episode from this is how crazy I am from season nine, the pickleball episode at their house they have that the, the the championship and they had give them Lala and Randall pickleball um, rackets, little pickleball rackets. And this is during this. Is, I was like, I need one of those rackets because they, they had a bunch for the cast. So I was like, I need one of those rackets. And I shit you not. I went online and it was like a professional. Let me let's let's walk through this together and see if we can find this. Because I was able to find this a couple of years ago. And maybe it's out of stock now. Give them Lala and Randall pickleball rackets. You guys don't mind if we just do this real quickly as a family, do you? A Randall pickleball racket. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, they still do have them. And they have them on Amazon now. Oh my God. Well, they're $104. That's a little rich for my blood for this, but like, look at this on Amazon, give them Rand and Lala pickleball packet uh, rackets. And I was just like, I kind of like, that's a piece of history. It's, it's uh, Franklin sports. So it's a real company. It's sitting at a 4.8 stars out of five with 13 reviews. Let's read the reviews on these pickleball rackets. Um, it was designed by Lala and Randall. So that's cool. Where are the reviews on this thing? Oh, wow. People are giving video reviews. Uh, it's four out of five. AJ Dishpandi says, good paddle for beginners. Good paddle, textured surface, gets more spin, lightweight, good for adult hands. Okay. Then another good basic paddle. And then this is a five-star from what somebody called Biscuit says, nice paddle. Could do without the give them La La branding. <laughs> Oh my God. This person was just like, I'm in the market for a pickleball racket. And he, he's like, I don't know why it says give them Lala and Randall. <laughs> oh my God. This is so amazing. Oh yeah. Here's another one. The negative is pros and it has all of the shit about the grips. And the neutral says has reality TV stars and their slogan on both sides. It's a negative thing. That's a negative. <laughs> Isn't life so weird? Oh, but Lala, we should do a send it to Daryl pickleball racket just to get back at Randall. Send it to Daryl pickleball racket. So Andy's like, James, now that everything is out in the open with Randall, can you say if he made you sign NDAs when you hung out in Palm Springs? And James is like, me? No. And Andy goes, he didn't. James is like, I've never signed an NDA in my life, Andy. And that was the end of that additional scene. And at this, Sandoval takes a breath like, oh. <sighs> Now, he's, of course, talking about the Coachella NDAs, which is a part of the show before we even knew who Randall was by name because he was potentially married to that actor from the uh, Amber Childers. Is that her name? Um, I've been told these NDAs do exist. They did exist. They were signed. I don't know if DJ James Kennedy just didn't sign one, but I think I can name a couple of the other cast members that did. And uh, I don't think it's probably my place to bring that up. But yeah, NDA, the, these did exist. It is one of the, uh, you know what? So, well, I'm not going to tell. Okay. So, uh, anyways, Andy's like, all right, we're going to pause here and take a quick bit, quick, take a quick break. We'll be right back. And Ariana gets up and she's like, oh my goodness, my back. And Lisa's like, when's lunch break? And this is when Ken comes in. He's like, did you know some sense of always in a jacuzzi with Raquel? No, and he's like, well, this is lunch. And Kitty's like, I'm hungry. And they get up, filter backstage. And Ariana's like, you're done with that disgusting rat. And Lala to Katie is like, am I too out of pocket right now? Because I feel like I, I feel like I am every time I open my mouth. And Katie's like, no, but it's like, and Lala goes, I feel like I want to pounce. And Katie goes, I just want to like get through. <laughs> Katie is the voice of reason all of a sudden. She's like, L I just kind of want to get through stuff. And I might like a little nosh I would like to have. And Lala's like, yeah, I agree. I want to get through stuff too. And they show Schwartz, <laughs> just lonely old Schwartz. 
he gets up from his seat and he gets down on the floor and he begins doing push-ups. You know, this has been the year of Schwartz getting his, you know, getting, you know, what was it? Getting the Schwartz back. So that obviously involves making the rest of the crew uncomfortable while the cast gets lunch and he's, you know, trying to do some downward dogs and light push-ups. but then eventually he just lays down on the floor. And I, you know, I can, I can't tell, I don't know Schwartz well enough to tell if this is a bit that he likes to do or if this is truly, you know, Schwartz is just like doing weird yoga poses in just various places. Um, so LOL, Sandoval put, this is when Sandoval changes out of the suit. And I do want to point out somebody on Twitter pointed out that there was a moment where he opened his suit jacket and you saw that the tags were still in there. So I'm like, oh my God, is Tom planning on returning that suit to Nordstrom? Because if you are, if you did, I'd love to just hold off real quick because I would love that for my reality show museum. Wouldn't you love, like, this is the suit Tom Sandoval wore for the epic three-part Vanderpump Rules season 10 reunion? Like, that that fucking thing should be in the Smithsonian, right? Smithsonian, right there. Just tear stains and makeup stains. But, like, imagine the poor person at Nordstrom getting that returned to. It's like, uh, yeah, th- I just returned this. It's like, uh, sir, there is... Uh, there's fake tears on this and there's a lot of men's makeup. Uh, we cannot. Oh, dude, you're not going to let me return this. What are you team Ariana, dude? How unprofessional of you, uh, sir. There's also white nail polish. All oh, dude, you to come at me for my nails, dude. They're, my nails are amazing. How dare you? You think you're a professional here at Northrum's? Oh, yeah. Why don't you carry around what it means to be a salesman in your back pocket? It means to serve and protect. So anyway, Sandoval pulls on his overcoat. He puts his big black sunglasses on. You know, he has his Diet Coke, which I don't have a Diet Coke, but I have a large copy right here. He has his Diet Coke and his Siggies. You know, he's like, yeah. He's like, I'm going to go listen to The Cure in the parking lot. It's every night emo night for Tom Sandoval, dude. Don't you forget about me. It reminds me very much of, and I made this meme a long time ago, of bender uh in breakfast club him and molly rinkwald like yeah dude we're rebels man you know like it's just very it's just very like fighting for my life up there dude uh and you know you see these like random security guards out there and you just feel bad for because he's like out there around them with like a cigarette like yeah dude Ariana is back in her sweats that she arrived in the studio in, and Lisa's like, why are you taking your clothes off, dear girl? And Ariana goes, because it's lunchtime and I cannot sit there with my tits out. How do you, which I, I'm very similar when I eat lunch. Um, how do you feel? And Lisa's like, you're doing an excellent job. Stop kissing her ass, Lisa. And Ariana's like, we're going to retape my boobs. Sandoval, uh, emo Sandoval, emo ball, as I'm calling him, heads over to the trailer, the trailer. And by the trailer, it's the hundred yards away from Sheena in regards to the restraining order. And this is our appearance of Raquel, right? And Raquel has that cow sweater on perfectly made up. You would think she is just in, you would think she's shopping for the day. Really just can't tell how she is, but Sandoval like, what's up? Knock, knock. <laughs> like, what's up? It's me, Tom. And Sandoval's like, hello. And Raquel's like, hi. And Sandoval's like, hey. And Raquel goes, how are you doing? And Sandoval goes, uh, not good. <laughs> I just love it. It's like, how are you doing? Like, uh, and he goes, it's rough out there, dude. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you think? Not good, man. That, uh, that's quite an ass kicking. <laughs> not good. Raquel's like, I know. And Sandoval goes, Good to see you. Good to see you. And he kind of, they stand up and they do this kind of very professional hug, even though we know that, um, you know, that he has put his penis in her vagina. And so it's, but you, you wouldn't know that from the. (laughs) Sandoval takes a seat. And looks at her. And there's like, I will say with Sandoval, there's a lot of deep pauses in the second part with Sandoval, especially. There's a very a lot of pauses. I think he dipped into Schwartz's Xanax jar. Sandoval is like, you look good. Um, listen, I, I got emotional right off the bat. And James has literally been like exactly how I knew he would be, which also is a clue in that he has really charted this out in his head. You know, and he's like, James, if I blink, he's like, oh, look at him blinking over there. <laughs> And Raquel goes, yeah. And Santa was like, like, he's just like out of control, dude. 
they show a split screen of Raquel in the trailer and then the others, the rest of the cast who have not cheated for nine months um, at eating lunch outside. And you have DJ James Kennedy, Sheena, Katie, Lala. They're all kind of talking back to Sandoval. He's like, Sheena fully groveling to Katie because she wants to be back in the group. And Lala, who like literally doesn't give a flying fuck about either one of us, calling me a narcissist. And Rachel's like, I saw everything. I think Sandoval didn't realize there was like a closed camera system. He's like, oh, okay. Uh, you know, and I, I have a feeling at this point, was he like nervous? It's like, oh, you did? You, you saw everything? Um, okay, well, uh, listen, uh, real quick, we need to get this mic off. I, like, I think at that moment he was like, oh, I didn't realize they were going to show you the stuff we said. He's like, uh, okay, they're, um, well, they're making out you, you to be and me, um, basically pathological liars and Ra Raquel was like I know I see that yeah even though we know that we're not and we haven't lied about anything besides this affair and Santa was like yeah <laughs> now listen there are little white lies that your mom used to little smack your hand for like don't you little do those little white lies but then there's like a bigger one. I don't know, you know, in terms of the line scale, I got to say this, the affair lie. That's a pretty, I would almost put it up there in the pathological lie and going to camp because then it made them lie about all these other smaller things. I mean, fuck it. Why are we even playing around with this? This, you know, like this is a hysterical line. This is like, wait a sec, what? And even Sandoval is kind of like, Raquel's like, even though we know that we're not, you can tell Sandoval's like, is this girl slow? What the fuck is happening? Like, what are you like? Because Sandoval looks at her like, even Sandoval knows like uh, the, the, the affair thing. That's a pretty big lie. Like uh, Raquel, uh, that's a pretty big one. <laughs> like you get sometimes the sense of Sandoval's like, what the fuck did I do, dude? Like she doesn't seem to get what's going on. Here. Like it really is so fascinating. We're back over at the other group for lunch. And James is like, if they do end up together, I swear to God, like good riddance, like live in a yurt together in the desert. And Lala goes, but guys, now real life is sunk in. The two of them together, he's going to be off doing his thing. Good. I hope so. And Ariana goes, and when little Miss Homewrecker starts making actual demands of her relationship. Oh yeah. I love that one. And Ariana goes, she's not going to be so cool and chill anymore babe just like i wasn't which you can tell that line it's a thought that is stuck with ariana about the cool chill girl is that sandoval say oh I, you know dude you know it's like you know like not celebrating me enough and like you know she was the one she would do mushrooms at sunrise and that is stuck with ariana the cool chill girl and because that's how Ariana realizes that she filled that space for Sandoval in the beginning. Now, back in the trailer, Raquel's like, I don't love the way it's coming across about your guys' intimacy. Like, clearly, I know what you're telling me, but like, just watching what you guys tape right now. And she points to the television. It looks like you guys had like this solid relationship. <laughs> I love that Raquel's like, why didn't you guys stay together? <laughs> you guys seem to have a pretty good thing going. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Like maybe Raquel only learns things when she watches TV. Like it's like Sesame Streets in the trailer. Like, okay, big mouth eats the biggest. <laughs> It looks pretty good to me. They flash back to, it says, and this is great editor troll, 114 minutes earlier. And Sheena's like, I sat down with Ariana and from the sounds of it, everything was great. And they had been very intimate that month. Their communication was better and they were in a very good place. Now back to the trailer and Tom shakes his head and like, oh, dude, that TV thing really fucked my plan up, dude. Sam goes, oh, that was when Ariana literally went from... Uh, you know, Ariana always like kind of talked down to me a little bit. And he, Raquel's like, okay, you know, like throughout, but like, then it went from like asking her, you know, like, um, just something, I swear to God, I thought he was going to say pins and batteries. He's like, did I tell you the pins and battery thing? I mean, right there, dude, come on. It's like, um, like just something simple, like, oh, what should I wear tonight? Or like, Hey, what do you think about this? And she's like, no. 
<laughs> they flash back to Sandoval trying on show outfits for his concert. And Sandoval's like, I think I'm going to do an outfit change. I'm either going to start with one of these. And he pulls out like these red sequin stretch bell bottoms. And Ariana's like, uh-huh. Or I'm going to start with one of these. And then he pulls out the same pants, but they're green sequin. And Ariana being hesitant to say, she's like, I don't like the green. So right then and there, when this Ariana, this Ariana chick, she says, I don't like the green. I'm like, dude, Tom, that is green light, green light. You got to cheat on this bitch because you fucking don't like those green sequin pants. You call yourself a girlfriend. You are a, you, what do they Scientologists call it? Like a SP. You are a suppressant. Sandoval in the trailer goes to literally her saying like, well, Tom, you're so good at fashion. Like you should just wear what you want. And I'm like, what? So just to catch you up, Tom is giving an example to Raquel about Raquel saying it looked like you had a pretty good relationship. And Sandoval immediately dives into she used to not like my sequin pants and then lately has liked my sequin pants. Psycho. That's like fucking split personalities, dude. How can you not like green sequin pants and then like green sequin pants? It's like, I can't even keep up with your changes. It's fucking crazy. These women bitch dude and Raquel's like all right I feel like she felt like you wanted to keep the relationship working because you never broke up with her this is fun because it's like Raquel like slowly coming to the realization that Tom has been lying to her as well like she's like huh it's like the Scooby-Doo mystery of like we solved it you know we knew it was you old man Sandoval and I would have gone away with it, too, if it wasn't for those damn green sequin pants. Sandoval's like, um, Sandoval goes, uh, yes, in a sense. I, I really sense that Sandoval at this point wanted to say, like, hey, chill out, Brainiac. Don't be don't be all getting into this noggin trying to figure out what what's what. How dare you? And then Sandoval's like, uh, maybe I should have, uh, we should have done this earlier. And Raquel's like, huh, you think? <laughs> and Sandoval's like, I know. And she's like, yeah. And then Sandoval goes, it's rough. And then Raquel goes, it's rough. And Sandoval goes, Ariana's going to unleash on you, dude. Yeah. I'm glad you came, though. <laughs> this is the big romance. But I'm still glad you came for Ariana to unleash on you. Just, But I, this is like, you know, Sandoval, one of those TMZ interviews uh, over the last couple of months with like the, okay, okay, uh, Tom, what do you think about cheating? Like, well, shouldn't you have like, let her know earlier? And Sandoval's like, well, hindsight's 2020. And that guy was like, huh? Tom, uh, okay, okay. Hey, Tom, when you, you say hindsight's 2020, and Tom was like, no, dude, like hindsight 2020, like, like in the past, like he was, remember that? We did a whole video on it. It was fascinating. Um, but it's this weird realization of two dimly lit bulbs trying to get enough strength to light a room, and it just isn't working. So, you have to wonder about even their communication of like, just in these small moments right here, they're putting together what probably would have been way better. Ah, uh, I'm starting to realize that maybe we should have told her early. It's like that jinx, like told her earlier jinx. You owe me a soda. I said that. No, I said that it's bizarre. And at the same time, you can tell Sandoval's like, Holy shit. And Raquel is like, doo -doo 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 -doo. like this is just, this is just a Wednesday. Or a Thursday. And then uh, Raquel was like, yeah, it just sucks because like <laughs> my entire character is in question now. It's like, yeah. And she's smiling and kind of half laughing because at the end of the day, this is fun. And she's like, I've gone through a transitional phase in my life this summer and I think the pendulum is swaying a little bit too far the other way. And that was just like, holy shit balls. Like, it, it, it's like, you, you think? I like that she's like, time to course correct. Sandoval's like, yeah. And she's like, and this is my wake up call. And Sandoval goes, I believe in you. I know you do. And she sighs. <sighs> and there's a huge pause again. And then Sandoval's like, all right, I'll see you later. All right. And, and during this also, she had taken off her cow sweater and she's just in this kind of black little shirt tight body hugger number. They get up and hug each other again. Sandoval leaves. Raquel just goes to get back on her phone, which also 
I thought they had their phones taken away from them. So I'm curious why Raquel got to keep hers and be on it. And I saw a couple of the other cast members as well. So we, I, I'm curious about that. And especially if she had a closed, you know, if she was actually watching the reunion from the trailer, why did they let Raquel have her phone? I'm so curious where they told us that they weren't allowed to have their phones. The cast said that. So I, I just don't understand. Maybe they got it at lunch break, but even then, wouldn't you be worried that shit would be getting out? This is an added scene from the Peacock version while the others are eating lunch. And Katie's like, um, to Sheena, are you staying or do you have to leave? And Ariana's like, she has to leave. And Lala goes, she has a trailer. And Sheena's like, I have to leave. And James goes, do you get to talk to us from the trailer? They have like this like whole little can, like, you know, those little soup cans. And they have like a string, like a little string that goes into the studio. Sheena, can you hear us? Yes, Abby, I'm in the trailer. So Katie's like, you're, uh, James is like, do you get to talk to us from the trailer? And Sheena's like, no, I can't have any contact. And Katie goes, so you're not going home. No, I'll come back at the end. I love that Sheena's like, no, I'll come back at the end for shots. Like, <laughs> I'll come back in for Peter to give us shots. And Ariana goes, if she doesn't get to come back at the end, then we're leaving. Now, this is like, I like when Ariana steps into this power a little bit of, listen, we're not fucking around. This is brutal. We're here. We don't really necessarily want to be here, but we have to be here. So we're going to, we're going to abide by some rules. And Sheena gets to be out there because you know, and you know, Sheena likes to do these reunions. Sheena likes being a part of this show. That is not a crime. Katie's like, so Raquel's leaving. And she's like, yeah. So, she, you know, Raquel doesn't get to do the fun shots at the end. Good. And Lala's like, I'm not making no cheers with no freaking SpongeBob SquarePants over there. And James like, no, 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 no. In that scene. And Sandoval's outside like, all right, dude, I'm done filming. I'm not. Yes, I'm done, dude. He's like in full emo mode. And Patrick, one of the show's producers, who, by the way, Patrick looks very ripped and in shape. And I, Sandoval, I would not be like throwing a tantrum around Patrick because Patrick could just take you over his like lap and just give you a little spanking like you deserve. Sandoval enters back into the trailer and he speaks to the camera. And he's like, hey, can we like have a break, dude? Like a for real break when we're not like being filmed? And producer Patrick's like, uh, yeah, do you want to go back and just get lunch right now? Yeah, but can I just like chat with her with her without like, and Raquel stands up of like, yeah, that would be nice. And producer Patrick's like, cameras are up if anyone is together. Cameras up, meaning we are filming if anyone is together, like the whole time. Dude, no, man. Like, no, I'm fucking taking my mic off, dude. And Patrick's like, you can have time, Tom, if you need time to yourself. But if y'all are together, you know, dude, I just, dude, I just, dude, dude, double dude, dude. I just want to fucking, sorry. Like, I know, Tom, but if you're together, we're not, dude. We just need a breath, man. Well, that, that's part of what it is, you know? And Raquel takes her purse and leaves the trailer. By the way, Raquel, we saw in those uh, Daily Mail TMZ photos of this moment where Raquel is just vaping her poor lungs out. She's like just blow, blowing plumes of vape everywhere. Um, Sandoval followers are out. I do wonder about that phone. Did like Sandoval text her? If they all have their phones, did Sandoval text her? Like, I need to talk to you without the cameras or the mic. Because if she saw that shit, I wonder if Sandoval's like, dude, I got to tell you a couple things before we get back in there. Who knows? We don't know. Producer Patrick outside the trail is like, all right, Tom, are you guys, are you going to go eat lunch? We legally have to get a break, dude. Raquel's blowing the big vape smoke out of her mouth. It's very cinematic. Patrick goes, you can have a break, Tom. We have food standing by ready for you. If you need a break, you can have a break. And Tom's like, I don't even fucking eat food anymore, dude. And Raquel's like, uh, yeah. And Patrick goes, all of them, they're eating lunch. They're filming that. You know what I mean? No, man. They are, Tom. I know. And Sandoval and Raquel start to walk away together. I'm going to fucking flip if you don't get us out of here, dude. I'm not kidding, dude. Fucking break stuff like Limp Biscuit. And Patrick goes, if you need a break, that's fine. And Sandoval screams, I need a break from filming, dude. This is when all those paparazzi photos happened, which by the way, we didn't get to see this moment, but they eventually sit down Indian style, like crisscross applesauce on the cement. And it was so like, dude, just let's just sit here on the cement and just be, dude. How did our lives get this way? Ugh. And Patrick's like, okay, Tom, go eat some lunch. Stop filming me. And Patrick goes, you're continuing to talk. You know what I mean? I want to talk to her alone. I don't want a camera in my fucking goddamn face. And Patrick goes, we won't. You're not understanding. Patrick she goes, you're saying that you want to talk to her off camera. Exactly. I know, Tom. Fuck, dude. I just need, I don't feel relaxed, dude. 
She doesn't either. We have to watch what we fucking say. Like, I don't, I, I don't want that. I'm in a very delicate position right now, dude. So he's pleading. He's like, you switching up his tactic. He's, 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 he's delicate, you guys. And, uh, but also this is what Tom rails against. Like, you know, it's like, be brave enough to show the reality. You wanted to show the reality of you and Ariana's situation. We are in that reality now. Be brave enough to show us this. And Patrick's like, just take a beat. This needs to take a beat. Patrick's like, okay, okay. It's very childlike tantrum. And Sandoval and Raquel walk off together, which is like outside. So I'm like, where are you walking off together? By the chain link fence? Everybody is back from their breaks and getting back to their seats on stage. And Lala's like, oh my God, look at the pink get up. And we have Allie Luber, DJ James Kennedy's tried and true in her outfit coming onto the stage for the first time. And Katie's like, whoop, 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 whoop. You look so good, Allie. And Allie to Katie's like, you look so good. I love that. I do love, and this was explained to me, um, I think in the second year of the podcast, because I would always... Um, you know, any housewife scene or really, really any scene with women in real life too, you'll get into those situations and girls will spend, you know, a good relatively like 80 minutes complimenting each other's looks, styles, all of this stuff. And so housewives like, oh my God, you look beautiful. Oh my God, you look beautiful. Oh my. And it's like, okay, let's get to the plot. But then it was explained to me by a woman of like, we do those things because men don't do that. And like we spend so much time on this stuff. We spend so much and we're, we're proud of this. And then men don't really matter. Like you look good. You, yeah, you, you look hot. Gotta grab that ass. But women will actually like, wow, look at your outfit. Look at your, your eyeliner. Look at this. Look at that. And that kind of made sense to me. I was like, oh, okay. That's, that makes sense. It's like a positive podcast review. Five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Um, so Ali is seated and Schwartz leans over to like Sheena. I think he's like, it's been fucking madness. <laughs> it's like, I laid on this carpet for the last hour. I tried to do a push up. And I did one push up. The crew's like five seconds, five seconds. And he goes, Welcome back. Welcome back um, to season 10 Vanderpump Rules reunion. I'm Andy Cohen, joined by the gang from Vanderpump Rules, including DJ James Kennedy's new top woman, Allie Luber. Hey, Allie. Uh, Sandoval, by the way, seems despondent. He's like in his chair. He's like, oh, Dude, I barely got a private moment with Raquel, dude. He just looks like just beat. And Allie's like, hi, how you doing? I'm doing well. Well, you met James at a show with Tom Sandoval and the most extras. Were you a fan of Vanderpump Rules before then? And Allie goes, well, I've seen Vanderpump Rules during COVID. I went down that bravet rabbit hole a little bit. And Andy goes, and there was nothing from James past that. And Allie's like, that worried me? Yes. Sandoval's face once again is like, oh, dude. The camera keeps zooming in on Sandoval's reactions and he just keeps making these sarcastic faces. It, it's really wild to watch. And I'm shocked during this scene that DJ James Kennedy is not looking over because you would think DJ James Kennedy be like, how dare you give Ali that facial reaction? How dare you? I see you. You worm with a mustache and bifocals. Uh, yeah, I can see your stupid little mustache pussy ass bitch reactions. Come on. And Andy... Uh, we get a flashback now of all of DJ James Kennedy's trials and tribulations. Uh, Sheena's first wedding, James yelling at Kristen, everybody fucking talk shit on you. And it's fucking true. And then we see in 2016, James to Katie, wait, are you pregnant? Congratulations. <laughs> and then in 2017, James to Lala, don't fuck with my bitch. Cause I'll fuck with your fat cunt man. You guys, I gave Peacock an extra $10 to hear fat cunt man i which by the way we're coming out with new shirts fat cunt man get them for father's day um these are all horrible fucking things i can make jokes time and time again but this is the behavior i'm telling you the dj james kennedy has to watch he has an acid tongue but more than that it's like really fucking disgusting and it's horrible there's not you know he can also not do these things and still be insanely funny you know like it would be one thing if this was what we were laughing at but there's an overall charm about dj james kennedy that you know we'd be an idiot not to admit that, that, that there is this charm we don't need this shit this shit is gross and disgusting you know fat fuck and all of this stuff he can be insanely funny and charming and we know there's like a deeper well of pain in there but this stuff is not going to fly anymore and i said this last week is that it's going to be up to him because so many people have goodwill for him towards him right now it is up to him what he does with that next season and i don't want him to blow it i really don't he's got the you know everybody is on his side for the main part 
for the most part right now. Um, so I'm worried about him because I, I don't want him to blow it. Like I do, I think we all root for him in a way. Um, okay. So, uh, Andy's like, uh, yeah. And Allie goes, yeah, I mean, for sure. But meeting him is different. I gave him a chance to really show me who he is. And he is lovely. And Lisa's smiling and Katie's smiling. And Andy goes, James Raquel broke off your engagement on December 3rd of 2021. And this is great during this whole thing. DJ James Kennedy's looking at his nails like, oh, I'm not hearing you, Andy. Oh, look at these nail beds. They're beautiful. Oh, how can one man have it all? And Andy goes, six weeks later, you met Allie. Was that long enough to process and get over a five-year relationship? And he's like, you know, honestly, I think everyone does process breakups differently. For me, it was enough time. Um, and Allie goes, we definitely both went in planning to take things slow. I mean, we did jump into it, but, you know, we had a lot of conversations about it. This is an additional, additional scene from the Peacock version. And Andy goes, Lisa, when you had tea with James, he seemingly cried to you because he was still dealing with his feel feelings about Raquel. Andy will call it Raquel, but then he'll sometimes go Raquel. Um, flashback to that day of tea that we saw earlier in season 10. And James is like, I'm Lisa, I'm in love with Ali. And Lisa says, but you were telling, well, you were telling everybody that when you were with Raquel, that she was the best thing that ever happened to you. And now you're doing the same thing again. And James is like, well, I've always been an emotional guy. I've always definitely, you know. And Lisa's like, I know that more than anybody, which is so funny when they're like little, having a little dainty tea. And James is like, I fall in love quickly. And you know, like I can't hide anything. Back to the reunion, Andy goes, do you think he was fully over Raquel when he started dating Allie? And Lisa's like, I just think it was still very present in his mind, the kind of rejection and the hurt. And I don't think he was still really in love with Raquel. I mean, God, who could be? No, she doesn't say that. And I have to say, getting to know Allie, what a pleasure. She's so good for James. Um, But coming back to that, James always cries with me, if you've noticed. I, I don't think there's a scene in the last 10 years when James doesn't cry with me. Flashback to 2016 at Villa Rosa. Lisa, you've got to sober up. And James is like, it's so hard, though. You should never have another drink in your life. And James is like, I don't know how to control it. Cut to 2018. James crying, Lisa, please. Lisa, please. No, I cannot. Lisa, please, please, please. I won't do ever anything naughty again, Lisa. I promise you. James, I want you to grow up now and pull yourself together. And then to 2019, Lisa, you have to get help. And this is just no dialogue. He's just going, ah. Lisa goes, I think maybe it's because I hold him to a higher standard than most people do. I chastise him and I'm also a little bit of a matriarch to him. Yeah, so emotions always kind of very, um, it's, it's right there, isn't it? You know, very, and Andy goes, I love it when you cry. And Sandoval shakes his head. He's like, dude, don't you, what about my crying, dude? You don't like my crying? Dude, what about my tears? And James like, thanks, Andy. You know what it is. You know, I've always been very open with this experience. And honestly, when I look back at the person I was 10 years ago, when Lisa used to talk to me and I used to really just like start crying, that in itself made me cry. <laughs> I love it. He's like, well, you know what it is. If I get a if I get any moisture in the eye, like say a raindrop, it'll just immediately get me crying. It's just one of those things I was born with. And Lisa's like, that wasn't 10 years ago, James. And James like, what whatever it was, season one. One or two, and Lisa's like every season. Well, yeah, Lisa, yeah, sure, but I do feel like I'm not the kid I once was, right? Right? I've definitely done so much growing, you know, and the crying in the tea place was just a reflection, really, of all those memories coming back and realizing how far I've come, you know? I like that he was like, that was a greatest hits cry. You know, it's like you look at your body of work and in my body of work is, you know, mainly crying and you like to celebrate that work and, and celebrating that work made me cry and it was a good cry at a tea place. James is like, I can like let loose with, you know, Sandoval throws his head back and rolls his eyes and bore him like, dude. And James is like, my emotions do come out, Andy. I do feel safe. And that's just what it is. And he goes, James, when Raquel was in the car ride from Vegas to Lake Havasu, 
she revealed some pretty awful things that you said about her parents. We get a flashback to that car scene where Raquel's like, he exploded on my dad at Thanksgiving, saying my dad is only with my mom, like, because he's miserable. Raquel in a talking head goes, he couldn't stop himself from saying really low blows, like, my dad's just miserable because he's married to a fat bitch. This is another weird thing for me. It's like, I don't doubt that DJ James Kennedy said these things. What, what bothered, what, what weirds me out is that would you want, you know, I know you're, you're, you know, DJ James Kennedy, we got to know that he's, you know, a bad guy in this moment, but you know, if it was my mom, I, I think my mom would be like, Hey, just real quick. Um, you know, let's not call me a fat bitch on television. Even if you're just narrating, like, could we just stay away from that? Maybe just say like, he just said something about my appearance and you know, fat bitch is so specific. I'm like, why mom? That's what he said. Like, ah, let's just not James. Is like, well, obviously not a proud moment of mine. Probably shouldn't have said that, <laughs> you know, I definitely take it back, which there, Aunt James, there's no take backs. Uh, Sandoval staring him down. And Andy's like, Allie, how did it make you feel hearing that James said those things about Raquel's parents? And Allie's like, Oh, I, I, I didn't like that at all. Yeah. I don't think that the word fat should ever be used. And James like, well, you know, and they, they've said some pretty nasty words to me at the dinner table. Andy Sandoval at this point whispers to Schwartz. He said the same thing about my mom in the first text I got from him, which I, I do want to highlight. Like, that's something to pay attention to. I don't care that Sandoval saying it. Like he's just going around calling moms fat bitches. Like that's fucked up. Like I like I, once again, like it's fucked up. He's got to like really realize that is not good. It, you know, we got to get him away from that shit. James continues. I'm not going to repeat things. What her family said about me, you know, her mom would, she would talk about my penis size, like every single Thanksgiving dinner, Andy, and Lisa's like, the mother would. I like Lisa was like, it wasn't the father. They cut to the trailer to show Raquel's reaction to seeing this. And the only thing that she can muster is a confused frown. She's like, I am feeling confused. Because if that was about my parents, I'd be like, are you fucking, I'd be yelling at the TV. James is like, yeah, she talk about my dick at dinner. And Andy's like, invite me for Thanksgiving, buddy. <laughs> Andy goes, well, like in a favorable way. <laughs> Cause that would be a thing too. If like, you know, if somebody was like this Ryan, he's got a huge dong over here. I'd be like, yeah, pass the Turkey. Thank you so much. Let's uh, I am thankful for what you just said. You know, like, I mean, that's not, you, yeah. You know, like, yes. And James is like, well, like, is he circumcised? Is he not? Like I heard he's not. Yeah. But what's a circumcised cock? Like, you know, she would talk like that. And his face is completely in disbelief. And Lisa's like, what? No, literally like she'd have these conversations with me. I got grandma buttons across the bloody table for God's sakes. What? Oh, grandma buttons. Oh my goodness. I mean, now we need Mima's beer cheese. And, and he's like, okay. All right. And James is like, sorry, sorry. So I guess this isn't the uncircumcised penis reunion, right? Right? Is the super uncut version going to be on Peacock, Andy? <laughs> Raquel's still looking at the TV in the trailer with a totally blank face. You know what would be amazing if it does come out after the fact that they didn't show her any images? They just had her look at a TV blank. <laughs> They're just like, Raquel, can we just get some B-roll footage of you just looking into space? And he's like, James seems very triggered by Raquel multiple times this season. And uh, we get a flashback to Sheena's second wedding in Cancun at the rehearsal dinner where James is like, so you made out with Peter Schwartz, Tom, who else can you make out with in our group? And Raquel's like, I'm trying to live a little. And then at James's beach day celebration, James is like this week at Imagine Festival, bro. And uh, Schwartz is like, that's a big deal, dude. Bigger than Rachella. And James is like, ha, fucking hilarious, hilarious. Go make another fucking joke. And he splashes that beer in Schwartz's face. And he goes, do you think, do you ever think he wasn't over her, Allie? And Allie goes, I honestly never thought that once. But I think James gets triggered by a lot of things. And I think he really did feel a deep betrayal. And he felt like he was losing his friends. Sandoval gives another confused look. Like, do you want? And Andy goes, do you worry that his continued drinking will become an issue in your relationship? And I was like, no, not at the moment. I definitely, I, I don't like you when you're drinking a lot, but we honestly, we help each other out. I'm not drinking as much right now and neither is he. And Andy goes, why did you stop drinking? She's like, oh, just because I thought I needed a break. I don't know. And Andy goes, that you needed a break? Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to take a break. And Andy goes, did you hope that James would? And James like, yeah, well, we both take breaks like together. I love couples that take breaks, drinking breaks together. <laughs> the couple that takes drinking breaks together stays together. 
Jamie's like, well, it's like an on and off thing. And Allie goes, we go like a month without drinking and then I'll drink again and that type of thing. Katie is smiling. They do a reaction shot of her. And, you know, it's funny because they're really trying to explain this. And Andy and, you know, it, it's like when they're trying to explain something that doesn't really make sense to us. But it's like, okay, yeah, they just take some breaks, straight. And James like, that's what I'm saying. Even though I am, even though I am drinking again, it is a lot different to how it used to be. For me, like, I'll never go back to that boy I used to be before I did quit drinking. DJ James Kennedy is obsessed with the word boy as well and man. Like, the, I'm a boy. That, that, when I think of that boy, that eight-year-old boy on the streets of Hollywood, Andy, trying to escape the likes of Randall Emmett, that fat cunt. Um, it is interesting the way he poetically puts things. Like, I grew up, Andrew, in that, you know, I just will never be that man again. Just slugging down Red Bull vodkas. Remember that one when he just, like, chugged a like was it a fireball bottle he just started and then that one a season finale when he came he was already fucked up and then he took a bunch of edibles and ken was like what are you doing? he was just in a whole nother planet i'm like are you in when people get wasted and do a bunch of weed on top of that that's because like those edibles they'll fuck you up and i'm like you like uh, you know i've been to space a couple of times but not space in the sense of uh I, you know, it's just why it, 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 it just scares me like that to be that out of control. Um, so uh, let's see here. They pan to Lisa contemplating that statement. This is an additional scene from the Peacock version. And he goes, Lisa, you're concerned about James drinking again. I've always been because I've seen the ramifications and the fallout from his drinking. You know, he's not living under my jurisdiction anymore. He works in, sir, but he's not a full-time employee. So I really don't have the right to kind of patronize him or guide him, even though I do normally check in with him and Nick Lane. But I just think that he is a much better person without alcohol. Now, from somebody that makes a living out of selling alcohol, Alcohol, that's not normally something I'd advocate for everybody. Give up drinking. But for him, I know, and he has, he's good until he's not good. And Schwartz is like, two cocktail James is great. And Lisa's like, and I've really seen so much potential in, in him, but he has a knack when he's drinking of creating utter devastation. Sandoval goes, we have this um, ongoing job in Atlantic City. And James got brought into it. And the last time that we were there, you were belligerently drunk and with like no shirt on and your pants. And James was like, so was Schwartz. No, dude, no, no, no. Security came to me and said, your friend is going to kick kicked off the premises. The manager told me later that you would smack the waitress on the ass and that they like had to have her sign a form saying that she wasn't like filing a suit. And you're like, okay, great. And guess what, Tom? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? You two just got drunk. You lost us that gig, dude. You lost us that job. That's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. And by the way, you two just show up and get drunk, okay? I show up. I'm providing a whole fucking show. And just, and Sam goes, you were climbing the rafters, dude. Bro, bro, my music career, my DJ in business makes fucking tenfold to you anything you can even imagine, bro. Like, guys. And Sam, I'm like, you were shit faced. And Andy goes, James, well, we're talking about your drinking. And Lala's like, James, can I? And Andy goes, please. Lala goes, I would like to, because this is a very sensitive topic. I think we can circle the drain about this all day long. At the end of the day, like you both drink very, very heavily, talking about Schwartz and Sandoval. I don't think they have any say on his drinking at all. And Sandoval's like, it's how we react with it. And Lala goes, I understand. Sandoval's like, I don't smack girls on the ass. And Ariana goes, no, you just fuck my friend. Boom. Okay, let's talk about this moment. Now, they are obviously, Lala is jumping up for DJ James Kennedy every time. You know, the other cast members are really protecting each other. But in these moments, once again, I'm trying not to be too hard on DJ James Kennedy because I truly believe that he can do it, that he can, you know, that I, 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 I do know he's a very sensitive person. But at the same time, dude, this drinking shit, like he's smart. Think about that. He smacked. Like, I mean, like, that's not good. That's think about what was just said there. It's not good. Signed a form. I mean, had to sign a form and say not sue. That's not good. That's really, really shitty behavior. And I hope that just, I hope he chills. I really, this is, you don't want any situation where you have to like, ah, oh, dude, he blew it again. I, and I, and the odds are stacked against him because he's on a reality show. So 
James is like, Tom, Tom. And Sandoval looks at Ariana because Ariana said the fuck my friend thing. And he's like, okay, it's irrelevant, I guess. And James is like, I don't go smacking girls on the ass. No, sorry. Sandoval says, I don't go smacking girls on the ass. And Ariana goes, no, you just fuck them. And Andy's trying to be hard. Goes, okay, we're talking about James. And Sandoval goes, you have a get out of jail free car for everything with this. And James is like, yeah, it is the fucking car this year, you mustache prick. You pussy ass bitch. He loves, he hates this fucking mustache, you guys. James, guess what? Gets out of his chair and runs off stage. And Andy's like, no, come back, come back. And Lisa's like, excuse me. And James yelling across the set, you mustache one bitch. The producer, Jeremiah, goes, all right, uh, we're back in. Audio good? James walking back to the set. It's like, ugly fuck. And he goes, okay, Allie, you told James that he needed to see a therapist after the beach day. Why? Now he goes, well, I think everybody should see a therapist, especially men. And especially James. She laughs. Sheena laughs. And Andy goes, James, did you end up going to therapy? And he's like, yes, I did. Uh, I graduated. I, I excelled in therapy. I fixed everything. I also fixed other people. I'm extremely good at therapy, Andrew. And he goes, yeah, I did. I met a very nice therapist. It's going good. It's going very good. You know, you can't win in therapy, though. Therapy is therapy. So I'm glad he's in it. I hope it's very true. And he goes, is it helping with your anger? And Sandoval's scowling at James. And James like, yes, I would say it's helping with me with my anger, Andy. And Sandoval makes a sarcastic face. And Andy goes, from what I see today, I, I, I don't think that uh, it, it doesn't seem like it is working. And Ariana goes, well, I think today there's extenuating circumstances. And James like, thank you, Ariana. And Katie's like, today's very fair. Now, this is an additional, additional scene from the Peacock version. And he goes, James, did I just hear you two just bought a house together? And Ariana's mouth drops. So does Sheena's. And by the way, I don't think DJ James Kennedy even had a send it to Daryl shirt. I think he did a worm with a mustache shirt, but that was recently. So I think he did this on his gigs. And, you know, he, you can go back and listen to recaps I did from like two seasons ago where I'm like, if this dude really... Because I was like, the, the thing that you can't argue with DJ James Kennedy is out there pounding the pavement. He's out there doing DJ gigs all the time. And there is that element of 10,000 hours. You put 10,000 hours of work into something, you're an expert, you just keep at it. And I said, DJ James Kennedy has a better uh, opportunity to actually have a career after Vanderpump Rules because he has this skill and he keeps working at it. And it seems like it's financially successful. And I know it even exploded even further because of this, this whole scandal. But James is like, oh, I actually just bought a house, Andy. And Allie goes, he bought a house. And Andy goes, you bought a house. And Ariana's like, you did? He's like, James Kennedy is a homeowner. And Ariana's like, oh my God, congratulations. And James is like, thank you guys. They're all clapping. Thank you very much. Which I will say, even Sandoval said was like, that's very cool, dude. And I was like, wow, even Sandoval jumps in on the congratulations. James is like, James, congratulations, dude. Like Sandoval, the, the first party was like, dude, Brock cut his hair? Oh, awesome, dude. Tell him I said hi. You know, these little moments where like the the everybody's anger slips. And it's like, oh, that's awesome, dude. Um, this is like, where, James? Where? James is like, it's a little trailer outside of Villa Rosa with Hanky and Banky. No, James goes, it's been a dream. It's been a dream. It's been a long time coming. Uh, it's in the valley, you know, in the valley. It's really cute. It's three bedroom, like a little gray home. And we see pictures of it. It's got a pool in the back. It's got a dream studio. You know, Lisa's like, see, that's what we want. I want to see success. Don't fuck it up. Um, he's like, yeah, I'm going to be focused. I'm going to release an album this year. It's going to be, it's just a beautiful time. I am so excited for his album. Please release it on vinyl. We'll get to that Sheena moment in a bit. James like, and Ali's bringing the cats and we're going to live together. A little family. Ariana, Katie, Sheena, and Lala are like, yay. And Sandoval goes, yeah, Jen, congratulations. And James like, thank you guys. Thank you. And Lisa's like, I love to see that. That was an additional scene. And he's like, well, you guys all spent a week in Cancun celebrating Sheena and Brock's wedding. Sheena, you revealed to your bridesmaids that you and Brock had already been married for an over a year. We have that flashback moment. And Andy is like, why keep that a secret? And she's like, we wanted to celebrate our love privately. We share a child together. We live together. So with the green card and all of that, I was like, let's get it going. I want to marry you. It was a nice to have that little secret for us because we didn't get married for anyone other than us. And Lisa's like, and the green card. And she's like, and the green card. Yeah, of course. And Andy goes, Katie, you and Tom went out to dinner to celebrate the sale of your house. It quickly devolved into the heat of an argument. And Katie is like, 
flashback on this case like want to just like be friends with brock and not be friends with me and she was like it's not at all no ultimatums and he's like you're that fucking good with him that you can't handle me just like handing the truth to you like so weird katie tom just be real just be fucking real be real be fucking real be <laughs> and short's like i don't argue with people it's such a weird thing and Andy goes, you told Tom he prioritizes someone he only sees three times a year over you. How would you characterize his friendship with Brock and Sheena? And Katie's like, well, I mean, I feel like I would say he's known Sheena for a long time, but he's only known Brock for like the summer before. And I didn't feel like they were close enough for him to consider Brock's feelings over my own. And Schwartz is like, the reason it's upsetting is because she has a long history of diminishing my friendships and katie goes well you're friends with everyone you're like a serial killer's wet dream like you're gonna get chopped into pieces one day because you literally will trust everyone and everyone even schwartz laughs he's like ha, oh, that's not true she's like yeah it's absolutely true there's some people i don't trust and katie's like uh i don't think so and sheena whispers is he sitting next to you i think sandoval and she was like huh additional scene from the peacock version andy goes i mean even you said that it was odd that Brock asked you to be a groomsman because you didn't know him that well. I mean, it's not as odd as Louis Riella, Ruelas on Jersey asking Bill Aiden to be, but whatever. Schwartz goes, well, I, first of all, was effing flattered and honored, but I, yeah, there was a part of me that was like, am I worthy? I'm not worthy. We're not worthy. Oh man, it's so Wayne's world. But we did have an instant connection. Like, I just don't like your tendency, Katie, to... And Katie goes, well, you connect to everyone. Not everyone. Not everyone. I do love people. I'm a lover. <laughs> Katie goes, you love. You're a people pleaser. No, I'm a people person, Katie. That was the end of that additional scene. But this is well-tread material. This is just them just... It, it's just hard because... <laughs> Schwartz doesn't seem to want to accept something that is so obvious to all of us is that he did prioritize everybody. And I mean, everybody over Katie. And that is a people pleaser tendency. You can say you're a people person. You genuinely like people, but you do have to evaluate what element or aspect of yourself you are giving again and again, that you are not giving to your partner that needs it. That's what I would imagine. And so it's got to be frustrating and it's got to completely. And I know I can't say this word, um, trigger, you know, it's, it's got to completely trigger. It's so frustrating because Katie is once again, having to be reminded time and time and time again, when I did speak to Katie this week, it was, um, it was good because you got the sense that she was not relieved, but there was this element of like, it is good to stand up for yourself. And I do have a good life. All right. You know, like there. It was like this underlying, I wouldn't say joy, but of, of, you know, life can be fun. You know, it doesn't have to be this, just being stuck in this cave of doom. And he goes, Allie, on the catamaran, Lala pulled you aside to give you some advice about dealing with James and his temper. And this was just that scene where Lala was like, I got to warn you about James. And Andy goes, did you ever feel like ever telling Lala or Raquel to stay out of your relationship? And Allie's like, I mean, I think at the time I was kind of open to hear what they had to say. But now looking back, I do feel like I could have been a little bit more like protective of us. And Lala's like, well, I think at that point in time, I was extremely triggered by my own situation. And I was just feeling like I didn't want anything that happened to me to happen to other chicks. And Lisa's like, why is Lala getting so emotional? I want to know. Because she's starting to tear up. And Lala's like, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. No, it's okay. You know what? This is the side of you i love i feed off your tears lala i don't always want to see your angry side and i get exactly that sentiment because i think there is this kind of deep well of emotion within lala that she does put this complete front up that if you listen to the earlier episodes had me really frustrated because i do know there is this well in there and she's very aware of the scenarios she picks up on things she hears other people's thoughts like she's very tuned in and especially when you hear her talking about the show after the show she's very tuned into everything she seems to get it but this is the part where i do i mean i don't need tears but i do need of like man this is insane um lala's like i'm sorry my life was just like a lot this summer i was hypersensitive to everything i felt like such an idiot such a fool and so i just felt like with her Allie, for example to just like baby her and james like yes 
I do fear for Lala a lot. I know what she's gone through and how strong she's been. Like as a woman, she's conquered a company, a baby, and dealing with such an asshole of an ex, right? That she's just an absolute legend in my eyes, right? And Andy's like, James, how did you feel when you saw that conversation? Well, I just watched it, honestly, and I didn't feel good. I called Lala. She knows I'm not that guy. So why are you going to go ahead and keep saying this? Like, you're not Raquel right now. And you heard it from her at the Agoa Hills Canyon Club. I didn't expect it from her and finally we get a break to the trailer to see Raquel I needed more Raquel fan cam I really did want that bottom right hand screen of just the entire time just seeing Raquel's little non-reaction Raquel is scrunching up her face at the TV at this She's like eh, but still no real emotion we see that producer Patrick is sitting behind her in the trailer like a guard They're like you ain't fucking going anywhere girl <laughs> it's getting intense and he goes what did happen at the Canyon Club Besides bad karaoke, I'm kidding. I do like the band. We get a flashback to Sir with Raquel telling Charlie about the Canyon Club. Raquel's like, at the end of the night, James got in a fight with Allie, and they were arguing loud enough for security to come over, escorting James out of the club. I do want to remind you, Zachary Reality, he has a podcast and Instagram, TikTok, but you know, he was on the show. I talked to him this week, but he, when he was on the show, remember he was there that night. He was there that night and he was there the night that Allie and James uh, met and fell in love at the first show. And he said, you know, he was talking about this moment then and, you know, somebody did get it on tape and I do know who that person is, but there is all this stuff that Lala, I mean, sorry, Raquel really, really wanted on this on the show. So they went about it in a weird way to get it on the show, which I don't think they talked about in this. Um, but Raquel was interested in reminding people that DJ James Kennedy ain't all that good. So this was a moment that Raquel really, you know, when she found out about this and heard about this, she wanted this on the show. And James was like, it was a lot. I was fucking exhausted. I'm sweating in my fucking, you know, I want a fucking shower. DJ James, DJ gigs are like intense. I'm done talking to everyone. So I ended up shouting to Ali saying, I want to go right fucking now. Next thing you know, security guard comes up to me. You can't be shouting. You can't be shouting around here. No, 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 no. Your girlfriend's right here. And Ali's like, like we weren't in a screaming match. So, and James like, and they escorted my ass out. And Sam was like, I didn't see it, dude. I didn't see it. And Ali's like, nobody saw it. So I don't know why Raquel was the narrative narrator of that night but that's not what happened in the trailer raquel is staring at the tv with zero emotion at what's being said every time you cut to it, it's just like uh and by, you can't see me but i'm just like uh sandoval goes a security guard basically said that they had been arguing inside and i guess that james like maybe grabbed their arm for a second or wrist or something and that was like literally the second time in the row we had been together on a thing like that and you had gotten kicked out. And she was like, yeah. And the first time she was in a room with all you fucking nutcases, okay? So quite frankly, I was protecting my girlfriend. I was protecting the one I love. I love Ali. So equine and beautiful a skin, alabaster skin. Right, right. And Santa was like, so you were blaming us for that. Well, what were you doing? Making out with Raquel in the back, right? While like Ariana's dancing out in the front. And Sandoval like, no, I was not, dude. No, I was not. Okay. Well, I was pretty sure it was happening. Your bandmates told me that they knew about it, which is interesting. Isn't that interesting? The bandmates knew about it. Ariana goes, dedicating songs to me that night, but you were already fucking other people. And James like, okay, right, right. And Andy goes, okay, all right. Well, we're going to leave it there. Allie, thank you for joining us. And, you know, oh, you're a big star, rock star, blah, blah, blah. She leaves. And he goes, we're back with the Vanderpump Rules reunion. And I want to get into the fallout from Scandaball and Sandoval and Raquel's affair a little bit. And then we're going to bring Raquel over to the stage. Sheena, because of the temporary restraining order that Raquel has against you, you will have to leave the stage before Raquel joins us. Ariana rolls her eyes. I thought this was great, though. It was very, they, they did this perfectly of like, I said this, you know, the production is so good this season is that they were like, this is a challenge, but we can make it work. And it brought this intensity to it of, we will now have to escort Sheena Marie Shea from the building. There will be armed security guards. We have snipers on the roof just to make sure Sheena does not do anything at all. You know, you really feel this intensity of like whole, like they need the who wants to be a millionaire music. And they're like, dee -dee -dee -dee, you know, just or like the unsolved mysteries. Like it's so eerie. Um, and he goes, but before you go, what's the latest on the restraining order? And she's like, we have a court date on the 29th. 
Well, Andy goes, she claims you punched her that night. They cut to the trailer to see Raquel putting on her finishing touches. She's getting like some makeup. She looks at the TV. Andy continues after watch what happens live. And she goes, I will speak to you about it on the 29th. And Andy goes, you can't speak to me about it now? No. And Raquel's watching the TV with no expression still. From the studio, Andy goes, did you punch her? I can't say anything. Okay. Does anyone else hear? And by the way, Andy knows that he can't, you know, so this is, I feel... He knows that she can't say anything. Does anyone else here think Sheena punched her? And Lisa's like, I think she might have slapped her. And, you know, how would this be great if Ken does bust in? I definitely think she fucking hit her so hard. They cut to Raquel applying lip pencil. And Katie's like, no, she can't. Look at Sheena's fingers or fingernails. She can't make a fist. I <laughs> love Damn, that's another souvenir I would have loved. I would have loved the nails that Sheena Marie Shea was wearing that night for my reality show museum. Could you imagine that? A little, little fake hand display. We're back in the studio. Sheena holds up her hands to display her two inch long nails. This is literally what uh, Wolverine has to do all the time. Uh, Andy's like, Sandoval, what do you think ha happened? And this is amazing. Get ready for a three minute pause that you can drive a train through. Sandoval blinks a few times. Along, he's like, uh, And he's just looking at him and repeats. He's like, Sandoval? Uh... 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 I wasn't there. Um... And he puffs his face with air. He's like, make me a bird so I can fly far, far away. Make me a bird so I fly far, far away. And Lisa's like, why is it so difficult to answer, dear boy? And Sam is like, because, dude, I feel like I'm between a rock and a hard place. And she was like, then just keep your mouth shut. That's probably better, Sandoval. And Ari was like, just shut your fucking mouth. That woke him up. And Sam was like, listen. The thing is, I don't want to upset my relationship with Sheena. And Ariana yells, you have no relationship with Sheena, you idiot. And Santa Monica goes, but I want to tell the truth. You can't handle the truth. Sheena scoffs, the truth. And Andy goes, okay. And Ariana guffaws, yeah, the truth, right. And Santa's like, when Sheena called Ariana on the phone, on speakerphone, she took Raquel's phone and was like walking, like eventually like hung up on Raquel's phone. And Ariana's like, not eventually. Sheena said, I'm on Raquel's phone right now. I'm going to throw it and call you from mine. Because remember, uh, this happened. Ariana called Raquel, right? And, you know, Ariana begged, blah, blah, blah. And then Raquel goes, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm having, I've been having a seven-month affair with Sandoval. And I think that's when Sheena grabbed her phone, right? And pushed her. And Sandoval's like, yeah. And Ariana's like, that's what she said. And Lisa goes, this was after Watch What Happens Live? Keep up, Lisa. My God. Ariana goes, you weren't on the phone for that part. And Sandoval's like, no, I was right there on speakerphone. And Ariana's like, no, you ran back to Tom Tom. This was before the speakerphone. And Sandoval's like, no, when we got in the car? And Ariana's like, yeah. And she said, I pushed her. And Sandoval's like, no. She goes, and Ariana goes, she never said punched ever. And Sandoval goes, she goes, I just punched that bitch in the face. And Ariana goes, no, she did not say that. And Sam was like, 100%, dude, I'll do a polygraph. And Ariana's like, no, because she threw her phone was in the street before any of that. So, and Anna, Santa goes, 100%, that was fucking said. And I remember thinking to myself, and he points both fingers to his temple, like the old brain was working. And Ariana goes, and I remember thinking, you're a liar. And Sam was like, she punched that bitch in the face. And Lala goes, I talked to Sheena on the phone and not once did she mention that she punched Raquel. Not a once. And I'd watch your tongue because Sam goes, I heard it. I heard it. And Lala's like, Tom, because I heard it, dude. I fucking heard it. And Sheena finally yells, I was on the phone with her. You didn't fucking hear that. And Sam was like, it was on speakerphone. And she was like, stop, Sandoval. Keep your fucking mouth shut. Stop. And Annie goes, okay, um, Sheena, you and Raquel were really close. And she's like, Barry. And Andy goes, until the truth came out about the affair. Yeah. Um, you were on Watch What Happens Live together that night. 
that you found out. You seemed like really buddy buddy that night to me. They flash back to that evening during a commercial break, and Andy is studying his cards, and you see Sheena like doing like Vogue, Vogue, Vogue. Uh, which, by the uh, way, Happy Pride Month, you guys. Today's the first day. Fuck yes, Happy Pride Month. We'll do more segments about that uh, in the coming weeks. Raquel were dancing in their chairs. Raquel's like dancing all like just mere hours before Scandal Ball breaks. And Andy goes, do you think you'll ever be friends again? And she's like, never. Raquel watches this from her trailer. I will say the never. I believe Sheena in that moment, but I believe Sheena's a very caring, feeling person at the same time. And she does have, she does realize that, I mean, I, I hate to get all deep about Sheena, but there is this thing where she does realize people make mistakes. You get that vibe from her. She's like, it, life is wild. Life is crazy. I get that sense sometimes. Cause even she was on a podcast this week or it was her podcast talking to that. She reached out to Sandoval when his best friend from St. Louis died. Cause she was like, you know, this is too much with everything. So I reached out just to make sure. And that's like a big crack in this whole, you know, like that's a big moment. I was like, okay, well, if you're doing that, you not near, like it would never be the same, but you could see a world just never say never. I, that's the other thing. Just to remember guys, never say never. Raquel watches this from her trailer. Uh, this time her lips are purse and she gulps, but still no real reaction. And Andy goes, uh, Sandoval said you knew something was going on between them. Was that true? And Sheena was like, I was suspicious based on everything that Lala had told me and things that Katie had seen. I started suspecting stuff. Absolutely. But not until recently. And Andy goes, did you tell Ariana about your suspicions? And Sheena's like, I sat down and had lunch with her and we discussed it. And she said she absolutely did not think there was any truth to it whatsoever. And that neither of them would ever do that to her. And I said, okay. And Ariana's nodding her head, you know, relaying, you know, saying, yeah, that's all true. And Ariana goes, Sheena really did come to me in a very respectful way about it. And I really, really appreciated that. And I know that Sheena would not do that lightly, given that she really cared about the two of them as well. I mean, this is another example of Sheena just being a top notch friend of, cause a lot of people were like, well, if you had these suspicions, why didn't you come to her? Well, Sheena did come to her. We found that out now. Sheena did come to her with her suspicions and Ariana assuaged. Ariana said, no, you don't got to worry about that. No, this would not happen. And yeah, you could say Ariana should have been more suspicious, but she wasn't. And, uh, I, I, but I give credit to Sheena of like, Sheena did the right thing. She came to her and said, before talking about your back, I want to let you know what I've heard, what I think, and just get your thoughts. And Andy Sheena, you heard Sandoval was telling Raquel that he said, and Ari, he and Ariana were in an open relationship at Coachella last April. Is that right? She's like, yeah. And we get a flashback to that scene in the bucket hat from uh, the finale. And she's relaying that story at, from Coachella. And Andy goes, Sandoval, is that true? He goes, I did not say that. I've never said that in my entire life, which I love that. It's like, is that like, I've never said open relationship, but I have said we're free to fuck other people. <laughs> like maybe it's like never said open dude, but I have said some other things. <laughs> Ariana goes, well, then maybe you should stop hanging out with a fucking liar. Cause she lied about you. And Lala goes, she lied about a lot of things. Sam goes, that is not true, dude. I just talked to her. I just talked to her. I don't even know how that would make sense of like, I just talked to her about Coachella right now, dude. Ariana mockingly goes, I just talked to her. Did you coach her on what she would say? And Santa was like, I didn't coach anybody. Oh, yeah, right, because you used to try to coach me. And Katie goes, because she also lied about everything that happened in Vegas and Havasu. And Santa was like, you coach me, Ariana. Let's be real. This is like the way you fight. Like, no, you did it, dude. No, no, no. And Ariana's like, well, you need coaching. This is an additional scene from Peacock. And Andy goes, Ariana, through the years, were you hiding issues that you and Tom were having from your friends on the, uh, uh, you know, or the public uh, on or off cam uh, on the cameras? And Ariana's like, no. And Andy goes, you weren't. No. And Andy goes, you feel that the relationship that you portrayed on the show was emblematic of what was going on when the cameras weren't there. And Ariana's like, yeah, I always would tell him when I didn't agree with what he was saying or doing. And I, well, oh God, you guys, I just got this. I was just thinking about those one-on-ones with Ariana, Tom, and Raquel that, that Andy did that started the show. And we have little clips of. How long do you think those went? And why? Do, this is another Peacock. If you're listening, and I'm sure everybody at Peacock is listening, why don't we have those moments? Why don't we have the unedited one-on-one -on -one with Tom and Andy, the unedited one-on-one -on -one Tom with Raquel, uh, Andy with Raquel, and the one-on-one -on -one Andy with Ariana? Wouldn't those be amazing to see the full interview, not just cut up clips? So uh, Ariana goes, yeah, I would always tell Tom when I didn't agree with what he was saying or doing. And I feel like he did the same thing with me. And at the same time, I was ride or die for that guy. So, and Andy goes, Tom, you disagree. You feel like you were hiding a lot from the cameras. And Sam's like, 
yeah, dude, that's like, uh, that's what I'm sticking to, brother. <laughs> I gotta get out of this somehow, man. Because I feel like we definitely hit a lot of our issues. Um, Andy, what's your feelings on pins and batteries, man? Because <laughs> um, I think there was at least like, why would you do that when you're calling everybody out for not being authentic? Which is Lisa nails this line. Lisa finally steps to the plate, nails a line and goes, why would you yell at everybody for being inauthentic? And then you were hiding your issues. And Ariana's like, yeah, why would you do that, Tom? Because I didn't do that. And he's like, so I don't understand. And Sam's like, well, because, uh, because, trying to come up with an answer. If I keep saying something, it'll come to me. And Ariana's like, I always address issues I had with you in front of everybody. And James like, thank you, Lisa. And Sandra goes, I never had an issue doing that. And Lisa's like, well, you were saying to Lala. And Sandra's like, no, no, okay. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Um. And that's one of the reasons, like, when I was bringing this up, it um, it had felt like it had been years of us not talking about the issues we had in our relationship. Like, it felt we had things going on. Like, we'd literally be arguing. And as soon as the camera turned on, it would be like, hey, honey, I'm home. Like, literally. Uh, okay, but you'd be arguing. I don't know. Like, so, I don't know, man. But I will say, you know, for somebody that says they didn't bring up a lot of their issues, go back. I mean... If you do rewatches of the show, he, you remember that time when they all went like somebody's birthday party was like Britney's or something, NASCAR. They rented that trailer. There's a scene between Schwartz, Jax, Jeremy, Ariana's brother, and Sandoval where he's like, dude, I just like want to have more sex with her. And like sometimes she'll come back from the gym and I'll like, and then Ariana's relaying the story to Britney of like, you know, I'll come back from the gym and he wants to go down on me. And I'm like, I'm not clean. Like that was literally the scene. So, he has talked about even the sex stuff on there before. Like, so it is weird when they talk about shying away from things too, because I also remember in, was it season eight when Ariana was having kind of a mental breakdown at Tom Tom was like, just sometimes I just want to go away and I just want to leave it all behind and just get on the road. And they're both wearing those big, big old Mumford sons hats. And Tom's like, dude, I'm with you, dude. I love you. And if you want to leave tomorrow, I'll leave with you. And it's like this really beautiful scene, which like, you know, so that was a very open hearted thing of like Ariana saying, I don't know about my mental health sometimes and him being so in support of it. And I thought it was like couple of the year shit. And I'm not saying that wasn't true in that moment, but you know, I just hate that he's now going back and trying to attack this legacy that they had and saying it's all false. When I think truly it's him just trying to find ways that he does not look as bad. Um, Ariana goes, uh, at least goes, so you would make a bullshit reality show. Like when you're questioning La La and Ariana's like, I know hilarious. Well, because Ariana was very, very strict about like, you know, like they don't get that. They don't get that. These are not trustworthy people. This is not a safe place. Do not put that shit out there, Tom. But it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I'm sure there's a little bit of that as well as there's probably a little bit of that with Katie and Tom as well through, the, you know, like, um, there is an like, hey, let's not fully go nuclear potentially. Like the choice is like they have a habit of like respecting each other on and off camera. And it was like, how dare you? How gross. Um, it just doesn't add up. It's like, okay, like Ariana now is this uh she's just this ball buster that just like, ah, oh, did she just work me to the bone, dude? She made me lie about my life, dude. If anything, Ariana would have protected you. He would have told you to, uh, to fucking like not do the karaoke. thing. <laughs> like, come on. Like if we're, if we're, it, it would just be, uh, wild. Um, I'm sorry. I just got sent a picture of my, my dog, Brooklyn. Um, yeah, my dog. Oh gosh, you guys. That was another shitty thing this week. My, uh, I didn't even know they had this. I, she's, you know, she's really elderly and she has doggy dementia. Um, you know, which I didn't even know, but she's getting confused a lot more and what. So I'm, I'm hopefully it's so hard to work things out with my mom. And then, so I think I'm going to get her soon, but it, it's like, she was like this, just so you know, this could be one of those last time. You know, anyways, I'm not going to, but I just got sent a picture, which is nice. I always love getting pictures of my dog. Um, so Andy to Ariana is like, you talked about intimacy issues. You had, you talked body image issues. And I was like, yeah, 
body image issues, intimacy issues that we've had. I've been to therapy. I've talked about my anxiety. There's all things that are very present. Present. And Annie goes, talk about your sex life. And she's like, yeah, my sex life. I've talked about all that. I've been very open and honest about all of that. So, so here's another thought I had is that maybe Ariana has been honest about the things in her life. Maybe Tom's the one that hasn't been honest. So Tom potentially was dealing with this stuff internally. Like Ariana was honest and Tom just wasn't. And it's easy to blame the as a couple, and that's what he's trying to do. But maybe Tom was the one that wasn't honest. And he was so caught up in being this good guy, this savior, this, you know, needs to be liked by everybody that it screwed everything up. I do want to make a point, though. The one thing that was kept that she was pissed that made it to screen was Lala going down on her in the car with Sandoval. And that was the thing where it's like, dude, Tom, why did you say that? You know, and by the way, you know why? I mean, because that's like a a sexy thing that you're like, okay, that happened, but that's crazy. And people will think like their thoughts about that. But Tom said it because he had to say it, dude. So it's hard to imagine a world in which Tom kept a lot of things hidden. It just is. And he goes, so Tom, what weren't you showing? And Sheena's like, going back to your vagina, you talk about everything. And Ariana's like, literally. And Andy goes, Tom, what weren't you, what weren't you showing? And Sam's like, I just think that. And Ariana goes, cheating. It sounds like I think the level of disconnect that was that was very present was something that we really didn't talk about. And honestly, like we could have addressed better, like with ourselves. But once again, this is what I'm talking about. I feel like Sandoval felt this disconnect and Ariana for some reason didn't. So you would actually have to clue Ariana in that there is this disconnect. And this is a thing, whether it be the Howie, whether it be that, you have told us that you shied away. You finally said you had relationship issues to her in the last couple of months. You went to couples therapy, even though you were already in a relationship with Raquel and already knew that you were going to break up with her, but you took her there, stringing her along, thinking that we are working on things. You lied to her and told her that you could work on things, that this this wasn't just a feeble attempt for you to break up with her and make the therapist do it, but that was the actual deal. So it was, it's completely batshit. And this, once again, if my argument for, we need a on, we need a timeline on screen, a little calendar we can update because it's full of shit. Ariana goes, everybody has their, um, their issues. And Ariana's like, usually it's money or it's sex. We don't have money issues with each other. We had intimacy issues with each other. And Sam's like, we had, we had, we had, you know, we had, and Ariana's like, either you address it and you repair it or you break up. And Sam's like, I did. And Ariana's, but you were already stepping out on the relationship. And Sam's like, there was, there was also, there, there was also, and Ariana goes, God, I'm not looking at you anymore. You disgust me. And Sam goes, okay, that's fine. All right, that's fine. You can speak to this side of my head. And Sam's like, okay, that's fine. Ariana throughout our entire relationship, the way you've talked to me, the condescending attitude, the way you like, like said, I rubbed two brain cells together. And Ariana's like, you will never get anything else. And Santa goes like the way that we, the way you'll always tell me like, yeah, your brain don't work so well. And I'd be like, and throughout the relationship and Ariana's like, you made that fucking joke, Tom, are you kidding me? And Santa was like, by the way, you can totally see Santa going, Sorry, Ariana, my brain don't work so well. Like you can tell he said it because she probably did some kind of cold shoulder thing that made him say that, you know, like it's so weirdly twisted. And Sam was like, no, no, throughout the, you were always telling me that I'm dumb. Forrest Tom, Forrest Sandoval. Ariana's like, I have no, never told, sorry, Ariana goes, I never told you you were dumb. And Katie's like, you're, you're crazy. You're literally delusional. And Sam was like, I'm not, dude. I'm not, Katie. Because there was a time when Ariana called me, Tom Shandoval, a shit for brains. It didn't feel good. And I said, I got some smart. But then she said, you can't do two plus two. And then I said, where are the pins and batteries? And she said, if you were smart, you'd find a way to do it yourself. And I said, maybe I'm not the brightest bulb in the box, but I'll do the pins and batteries. Because I've got what it takes to be cool. But she said, listen, you're a stupid piece of shit with no brain. You're fucking stupid and can't do anything. You can barely read. You're this stupid, Tom. And I'm saying, no, 
No, you gotta know I've got the street smarts, and then I meet a beautiful girl like Raquel, who cares like your Albert Einstein, and I'm like, holy shit, cause I'm used to being called stupid, and kicked around, and saying you have no brains, and saying you forgot to wipe, and all of the things that you need a brain to do, and then Raquel's like, holy shit, you're so fucking smart, and that's where I rise, I got my Mojo back. I'm Tom Sand fall with the mojo. I'm fucking smart. I'm going on Jeopardy next week. And I'll be like, hey, Alex, for $200, what's the fucking uh, worm with a mustache? And I'll know it's me because I'm fucking smart. I'm Tom Sand and Thank you. Thank you. And ho, oh, sit down. That's crazy. That just is off the top of my head. So, um, <laughs> um, so <laughs> sorry, <laughs> so stupid. So, anyways, Tom's you know bitching and moaning about this stuff. Your brain won't work so well. Ariana or Katie calls him crazy, and Katie's like. Sam was like, no, I'm not crazy. And Katie's like, yeah. And Sam was like, I'm not dumb either. And Ariana's like, I never said you were dumb until today because you're acting dumb today. And Sandoval's like, you call me dumb. <laughs> well, then I did check, and I don't know if this is in other places or just Los Angeles. If you do call somebody dumb, you're allowed to cheat on them. And I, I did not know that law. Now I feel like the, I feel like the dumb one now, you know? So apologies. All right, I was like, no, I've never once called you dumb and I'm going to use your tactic that you told me about filming the show that if someone's saying something wrong about you, you never let them finish a sentence. So here you go. And Sam was like, no, that's not what I said. I said, and I was like, yes, you did. And Katie's like, wow. And Sam was like, that was also your tactic. That was yours. And I was like, that was your tactic. No, that was your tactic, motherfucker. This was an added scene from the Pika. So he literally goes, motherfucker. He likes his motherfucker weird, but it's like, what are you calling her motherfucker? And Sandoval, it has now been widely spoken about more you than Ariana, that you really do like to control a narrative and you do practice things and you do have things that you do in scenarios and advice that you give. So cut the shit, dude. And Jamie's like, oh, he's finger pointing. Look at him. He's finger pointing. And Santa was like, girl thread propaganda, dude. And Lisa's like, did you just call her motherfucker? And Ariana's like, well, now the words are accountability and propaganda. And Jamie's like, propaganda. It's like a circus. Ariana's like, those are his two words. And he's like, okay, I'm moving on. Uh, Sheena, I do have something for you that is from Raquel. And he brings out a shit sandwich. You know, <laughs> He's like, she's not allowed to give it to you in person. She gave it to me to give to you and it's one of those um it's like a fruit basket it's like uh edible uh edible arrangements it's really nice and you know with those edible arrangements you can see the pineapple but you can tell it's full of melon like the cheap fruit uh but it's nice and i think sheena was really appreciative of the gesture no no it's like a folded up piece of paper and we go to andy's one-on-one -on -one with raquel and andy goes we're going into this re reunion. You two have to be a hundred yards apart, which is further than any soundstage. And so you won't be interacting at all. How do you feel about that? And she's like, she's like in her little like outfit for interviews. And she's like, I completely regret filing the restraining order. And I've been taking every measure to get a drop. I spoke with my lawyer and he was able to file a request to dismiss the court hearing altogether. And this is the paperwork showing that for Sheena. And Andy goes, this was filed today, I believe. And this is a request for dismissal because it is in the process. And she is dropping the restraining order. And that's what that is. And Andy hands that paperwork to Sheena. And James claps like, yay, all right, finally. Now, you guys, a little bit of dirt. And I think we talked about this when Jamie was on or I was on Jamie's podcast. Um, was that this was supposed to be the dropping of the restraining order was supposed to happen weeks before the reunion. And they were promised this. It was like, if you guys chill out talking shit about Raquel, I think, or like just, you know, not talking shit, but just like, you know, she will drop the restraining order. It does seem whoever the team that was working with her or for her or still, I don't know if it's her parents or what, they were like playing some real hardball, weird shit tactics. 
And so it was weird that it did go down to the line like this, that she did not pull it sooner than she did. And it was really shitty because she really did screw the reunion. In a way, I think she made the reunion better because I think this version of it is very interesting. But this could have been ended a lot earlier. And I believe Sheena and all parties involved thought it was going to be over weeks before. So this is a wild moment. And I think Sheena really was getting very nervous because it's really fucked up to do to somebody, especially with somebody with a kid. Um, Ariana, Ariana goes, well, I'd rather she didn't, honestly. We don't near, need her near any of us because I think Ariana's scared of like, oh shit, are you telling us the restraining orders drop and she's coming out on stage with all of us? And Lala goes, this thrills me. This thrills me though, Sheena. And I know you did nothing wrong. You and your legal team were like, let's fucking go. The court system is a fucking bitch though. And I'm so glad that you can like be present with your kid. And Sheena begins to burst into tears. Like, but like real, like you feel for her. You see the pain here, you guys. This is real. And Lala crying goes, this is really taking a toll on her. It's taking a toll on her. And Santa was like, I totally get it, dude. And Ariana to Tom's like, shh. <laughs> shit you fucking idiot sheena choked up it's like having this for the last few weeks first of all the betrayal of two of my best friends that is heartbreaking in itself now raquel is in the trailer and sees this and now she is just bawling no she's like there's no you facial reaction at all you just like, i think she i don't know maybe like a light fart i i who knows sheena continues but uh she's like but to throw all of this on top of it it <laughs> When, when I did nothing but take care of her and Lala gets emotional watching Sheena get emotional and Sheena's like, I gave her a home to live in when she didn't have anywhere to go. And that is the home that Sheena then went on a podcast and said, this girl was like knocking boots in my sheets and didn't actually change the sheets, which is dark in its own fucking, you know. And Andy's like, she stayed with you after she broke up with James. And she's like, yeah, I was the sister to her that she didn't have growing up. I did everything for her. And Ariana now is trying not to cry. They cut to Raquel sitting in the trailer watching it. Like she's like legs crossed. She's like kicking the top, top leg up and down so that her body and head kind of bobs, which somebody wrote me. I thought there was interesting. There was like this rocking motion, almost kind of like um, a childish rocking motion. Like the children will do that to comfort themselves. And I thought that was a really neat observation. I'm so sorry I didn't write down your name, but I thought that was like, wow, that is very interesting if she was trying to soothe herself, per se. Um, Sheena is crying hard now. And for her to do this to me, this is taking such a toll on me. I have not been able to be completely present. This is actually not serious. So I'm going to stop. My God, I keep getting texts. I got to take my phone. I got to silence all notifications. <laughs> Um, I have not been able to be completely present for my daughter because of all this legal shit I'm dealing with. My daughter sees me crying and she starts crying. She started hyperventilating the other day because she saw me having a full breakdown. And it's been a lot, Andy. So someone I cared about so much who I loved. The trailer cam flashes a poker face Raquel. And she's like, and when I had a suspicion, I said, Raquel, I know you're better than this. I know you would never do this. And she goes, never, never. And I said, please don't ever do anything that's ever going to make me have to be apart from you. Ariana and I have been a ride or die for you. I love you so much. Don't do anything to ever change that. And she said, I promise I wouldn't. Sheena, I would never do that, Raquel said. And Andy said, you said you trusted your husband in bed with her. And she's like, I did. <laughs> and then it gets crazy. And I'm like, yeah. And then we get a flashback of that scene of Allie's like, would you feel comfortable with Brock going to the club at 1 a.m. with Raquel? And she's like, yeah, I would trust him in the same bed with her. Why do we have to go to those extremes? And uh, Sheena's like, the three of us, literally in Vegas. She didn't want to go back to her room. And she's like, can I sleep with you guys? And they've now done a split screen of Sheena and Raquel. And Ra Ra Raquel is just stone faced. She doesn't flinch. And Sheena goes on. I was like, sure. I was in the middle, but still I trusted her with everything, everything. I wonder if I ever am in a situation, uh, let's say BravoCon. I'm tipsy. I don't, I'm maybe lonely. Who knows? And then like, Somehow I bump into Sheena and Brock and I'm like, Hey, what's up guys? Can I, uh, can I, I'm lonely. Can I bunk with you? Can I bunk with you guys? Like, wouldn't it be great if I, and I'm like, I'm big spoon. I wonder if they would let me, uh, I'm going to have to ask Sheena about this. So Schwartz puts, uh, you know, his arm around her. Cause Sheena's very, you know, emotional and crying. And he's like, she's like, get it out. It's all right. Get it out. And Santa goes, Sheena, I'm really sorry. You know, Ariana's crying, but rolls her eyes. And James is like, la, la, need a tissue. Um, and then the, the cold ice school girl in the trailer says, now I'm thinking I should have wrote Sheena a personal note. Uh, what? What? 
I'm telling you, there is something off. Now I'm thinking I sh- now I'm thinking I should have wrote Sheena a personal note. <laughs> like what's it like burger? Like I'm sorry, <laughs> you know. I'm sorry, don't hate me. I just can't. <laughs> no. But like wrote Sheena a personal note. Like you think that would have like, huh? Hey, Sheena, it's Rocky. Um, anywho, wanted to say you are my BFF and I love you and I'm sorry I saw you have a thing that I am learning about called emotions. It's so bizarre. Um, and, and at this point, Raquel is smiling at the producer just weirdly. And she's like, as things are unfolding, there's more realizations. And I'm like, more regrets? So she's like, actually, like, I didn't realize this. And now that's making me have more regrets. Like, you didn't realize this? Something is so off and backwards and it's going to haunt me if we don't get some kind of answer because how can you be like, wait, you didn't think about this? You didn't know. You were checking in on all these other things before your phone got taken away, before you went to your camp. And then, you, you like, you did know. What are you talking about? But this is like the, you know, like you and Sandoval, when you were talking about all this shit, you didn't talk about everybody's feelings? Sandoval's like, this situation is something that spiraled way way out of control but it doesn't mean that like the last 15 years we've known each other is like i've been like being this fake person up to the fast eight months ariana shaking her head that should tell you sheena we did not do this maliciously and ariana's like you watch what you fucking say right now because it was malicious it is malicious but i did not do it with malicious intent hey siri What's the definition of malicious? It's an adjective characterized by malice intending or intended to do harm. The transmission of malicious software such as computer viruses. It's a noun. Hmm. Um, Intending to do harm. So intending to do harm is malicious. Uh, So anyways... Ariana's like, well, what fucking intent was there? Because you were already fucking somebody before this. Because remember, he cheated on Ariana before Raquel. You're disgusting. You guys are done being friends, so don't even fucking worry about it. I do like Ariana kind of staking claim of like, remember, Sheena's not your friend. Don't even fucking think about it. It's not coming back to you. And I do worry about that. I've told you that before when they do have to all film together. You know, I like Iceberg's Thaw, like, you know, who knows what's going to happen. So I do worry about Ariana in that you know, when that eventual scene happens where Sheena does shoot with Tom, like I had to hear him out. And she's like, cause you can tell like this. Sometimes that is that kind of life raft life raft you need is that you will not be in contact. Please don't be in contact with the person that completely fucking has destroyed certain elements of me. Um, James like move on. And Ariana says, like, go ahead and be the real you Tom. And Sam's like, this is the real you. This is the you. This is the you. I don't regret in our relationship. And Ariana's like, yeah, I feel great about who I am right now. And James like, what's wrong with that, Tom? What's wrong with that? And Sam's like, you deserve to be that now. You deserve to be unapologetically now. I, Tom's barely making sense. He's, I, I don't know what he thinks he's doing, but you know, he does not like a woman standing her ground. And I feel like, you know, somebody stating facts that it's a female around Tom. I think both Tom's are like, there's a little bit of like, well, who the fuck are you, dude? It's weird. It's, it's misogyny. Ariana's like, and on the speakerphone conversation and Santa's like, but you were unapologetic through our entire relationship. You never said you were sorry. What is this sorry about? What is the sorry? What does she need to be sorry for? Andy, ask the fucking follow-up question. What does she need to be sorry for? What apologies did you not get? Was it your, your, she made you feel like a dummy? She didn't like your little clothes? Your little Forever 21 look? She didn't like that? And is that what the apology? Is the apology for the fashion? What's the apology for? Ariana goes, shut the fuck up. That speakerphone conversation you seem to remember so well. Do you remember what you said to Sheena in that conversation? Yes, I do. That you didn't really care about her and that you weren't really friends. I said, I said, no, I did not say that. And Sheena shakes her head. She did say that. And Ariana's like, yes or no. And Sandoval's like, this is what actually happened. Sheena said, I asked you about this. And Ariana goes, we're going to hear what actually happened from the liar. Great. Okay. And Sheena's like, I confronted him as well about it. And Sandoval's like, 
Uh, yes, and Sheena said, I asked you about this at Ariana's DFH event. I like when we talk about things in terms of their promotional events. <laughs> so Santa was like, I talked to you about the tu- at the Tummy Tea event. And Santa was like, I said, Sheena, I'm not going to tell you. And Ariana's like, what the, which that fucking rat came to. They show a photo of Ariana and Raquel laughing at this DFH event. And Santa was like, I'm not going to tell you. I was like, Sheena. And she was like, of course, I knew, no, you were not going to tell me in that situation, but I would have, would have been doing a disservice to Ariana as her best friend to not question you. And Santa was like, of course, you needed to at least lie to my face. I did. I love these. Like, I did lie to your face, dude. And she's like, yeah. And thank God you did because I would have had the burden to tell her. And Sam was like, that would have put a burden on you. That would have put a burden. Like, he's like, I'm a good guy, dude. I didn't make you, I didn't put the burden on them. You the burden, burden. And she was like, yeah, like you did the shorts. And Sam was like, and dude, I was also on fight or flight. And I said that shit. Like he said some really gnarly shit to Sheena, like how fucking fake Sheena is, all this stuff. And Lisa's like, well, he's never going to tell Sheena before he's going to tell you. I mean, no, he wouldn't do it. And Ariana's like, well, he wasn't going to tell me until three weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, which I still think Tom would have talked himself out of telling her before the reunion. I think there was a good plan, but it seemed like Tom had a lot of plans. And even Schwartz is like, his timeline kept getting messed up. He was trying to like, it's like the bar. It's like Schwartz and Sandy's, um, we're planning to have Ariana operational by the end of August. And then it ended up, we had so we couldn't get a chef for Ariana to tell her the truth. Like it's, These guys cannot keep a schedule to save their lives. This is an additional scene in the Peacock version. And Andy goes, did you ever ask Brock if anything happened? And she was like, of course I asked him if she ever made an inappropriate pass at him once everything came out. And Andy goes, and, and she's like, he said, absolutely not. He said, also, he never gave off that vibe, obviously to make her comfortable to feel so. This is unseen footage from the car ride from Vegas to Havasu. And Lola's like, when you sleep with Sheena and Brock, Raquel, do you sleep in the middle? And Raquel's like, we did a cuddle puddle. Yeah. And Katie's like, really? And Lola's like, are you in the middle? She's like, no. And Lola goes, be honest. And Raquel is like, Sheena, Sheena is in the middle. And Lola goes, have you had a threesome with them? And Ra- Raquel's like, no. And then um, uh, I'm blanking on the name. The other friend uh, goes, not yet. And Lola goes, I feel like that's a slippery slope. And Andy goes, I'm all right. I'm sorry to have to do this, but Sheena, can you exit the stage? And we have armed guards coming in right now. And they put her, they put her in the straight jacket, you guys, and they just wheel her off. And and then Andy goes, and once you are the appropriate distance away, Raquel will make her way over to the stage. The tension, you guys. And Sheena's like, before I do that, though. And Andy's like, yes, Sheena. And Sandoval pops off his chair and takes a few steps and turns around and goes, I got to get out of here, dude. I got to get out of here. And she's like, you can go. You don't have to be here for this. That's fine. Um, anyways, Annie, just before I go, 10 years ago, when we shot our season two reunion and you had made a joke that by 2023, you're going to have an album. And we flash back to that reunion from 2013 and Andy Cohen with the salt and pepper beard. She, <laughs> uh, Andy's like, Sheena, Sheena, you had a single last year. You had a single this year. Good as gold. And she's like, yeah. And Andy goes, I mean, at this rate, you're going to have an album by like 2023. And then now Sheena's like, well, Andy, I do have something for you. And Andy goes, okay. And they cut to Sandoval out in the parking lot muttering, shut the fucking bullshit, dude. And he's like Diet Coked up. Somebody hands him a Diet Coke and he's like, oh, good fuck, dude. Sheena gets out of her chair and goes towards the back of the room and grabs a vinyl album, you guys. She just says, I just wanted you to know that you're good as gold. And she hands Andy an album with his be- the beautiful, if you've ever seen on the cover art on Spotify or, or Apple Music, it's Sheena Marie's face. It's like Sheena Marie, good as gold. And uh, it's a fucking vinyl album. And Andy's like, oh, wow, this is amazing. And she's like, but inside is better. And he pulls out, it's a gold vinyl. And she is like, and it's real. You can play it. And Aria's like, oh my God. And Andy's like, this is super cool. And Andy goes, we'll be right back. And we'll hear from Raquel for the first time. Okay. So listen, I think if I'm not mistaken, when Sheena was on this, I said, we need a vinyl of Good as Gold. When I saw this moment, I freaked out. I was so excited because I'm a vinyl collector. I'm a music lover. And, uh, I need this final. And uh, yeah, I, I've, I've, I've messaged with Sheena. I said, are you fucking kidding me? 
I said, I need that. She's like, I don't know if enough people would buy them. And I'm like, Sheena, I'll buy a hundred out of the gate. That's a lie. But I just wanted to, you know, try to get her to do it. And she's like, <laughs> and I was like, Sheena, we can, we can move. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Have I not, did I not say this even a couple weeks ago on this show? I've been talking, like, it would be the funnest gift ever. You could like, I, I know I just said this, you could display it. It would be the coolest gift ever. You could sell these even fucking target. Are you kidding me? And then Brock, he tagged me in this story, which he has since deleted. I don't understand this. Um, uh, I, um, he, he tagged me in the story overnight where he was like making the vinyl or ordering more. And I reposted that and then he deleted it. So I don't know why he deleted the story because I noticed it wasn't up anymore, but he tagged me in that story. Um, so I was like, oh, wow. And I was like, I need, I I'm truly, this was the most, this almost made up for all the scandal. I was like, if we could get a good as gold on vinyl with a gold pressing, are you like move over Jack White? Sheena Shea is going to save the music industry. And oh my God, another, another brainiac idea. I just had a side good as gold B side good as gold. Uber one remix. Are you kidding me? Boom. Ben Conrad got uh, savings. So Sheena's like, I'll be back at the end. I love that she even mentions Andy. I'll be back at the end. Don't forget about me. And they flash to Sandoval huffing on a cigarette. Dude, like, oh, dude. And he goes, blowing it. He says blowing it. Like, is I think he means I'm blowing it or blowing it. But I don't know if he means just blowing the smoke. But he's like, blowing it, dude. He's by himself. Sheena Marie walks off set to her waiting car to drive her a hundred yards away to the trailer and they play her out with because we're good at it's the this thing editing wise is so powerful and beautiful and just so good and funny is that you see sandoval smoking then you cut to the car like pulling up door cutting up sheena getting in and they're like because we're good as and it's like an upbeat song and it's just weird it's like a david lynch movie on steroids it's it works so well and Andy goes after the break raquel is here and ready to join us we are shown Ra raquel getting into her vehicle now and being driven over to the studio a lot of cars in play and Andy goes schwartz you know you're moving over one seat for this. And Schwartz is like, I'm moving over here? And Ariana goes, no, he's not. No, he's not. And James is like, oh, Tom didn't like that. Because what Andy was saying, no, you're moving over one seat so Raquel can sit next to Tom. Now, I do have, I've said this before, but I did get inside information from, you know, somebody on the cast that said Ariana was like, yeah, the, I, I asked them to not let these dorks sit next to each other. And I think that was, the thought behind that was like, Remember, at this point, she's not seeing them be coupley, and she does not want to see them next to each other. That's was really painful for her. So I understood this sentiment. And from what I understood, they told her that Schwartz would be in between, but then they switched that, which was pretty shitty. But from a production angle, you kind of like, well, we do want to potentially see Tom and Raquel next to each other. You do want to hold, you do want to, you know, put the screws in on that, but that's a tough call. And he goes, Welcome back to season 10 Vanderpump Rules Reunion. Before we bring her out, I sat down for a separate one-on-one -on -one with Raquel. Let's take a look. Raquel's one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, she's dressed like she's, you know, like that job interview look that she keeps up with the blazer, you know, the neat green, the, you know, black thigh-high boots with the spiked heel, the whole bit. And Andy's like, hi, Raquel. Hi, Andy. How do you feel about being here? <sighs> a little nervous. I know it's important for me to be here, so I have to take accountability for my actions. And so I am here to do that. So these are pageant responses. Just very, this is very crisis, very, this is what I'm here to do. And I have to do this, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, explain to me how the relationship started. What was the first kiss or the first spark of emotion that you felt? And, um, Raquel goes, well, Tom and I have been friends for a while and he's always been somebody that's been in my corner and has rooted for me. And then things started getting more romantic after this girl's trip that I went on. And Andy goes, did he make you feel special? Yeah, he made me feel heard and seen, which is beautiful, right? We all want to make do that for each other. She also keeps saying this girl's trip. Like it's so, to me, this is another rehearsed thing of like, we've got to hold true to girl's trip. And then guys night, guys night, this happened at guys night. 
you know, this feels, and I do think we're going to hear something wonky with the timeline next week in regards to when this actually started up. Um, guys, no, I, Raquel goes, and those feelings that I haven't really felt maybe ever. And Andy goes, really? The way that he was. And Andy goes, you never felt that way with James. No, no. How did you envision that this was going to play out with Ariana? Did you think there was a path forward for the two of you that this was going to go over well? And this is Raquel with a big, happy smile. Yeah, I think I was living in my little reality, hoping that it would work out in a certain way. I was hoping Tom would break up with her and, you know, in that so that we could start dating. Jesus, mother of God, what? This is what I'm talking about. In her weird mind, she thought they would tell her she might be upset for a day and then realize we're all good friends and that they could start. I mean, this was, this was Raquel's big, this was the, wow. Guys, this is the shit when like, when I was nine years old, I thought I was going to marry Kim Cattrall from the movie Mannequin. I know she did Sex in the City, but I was obsessed with this movie Mannequin with Andrew McCarthy and her. And basically like this guy, like this mannequin comes to life and it's Kim Cattrall. It's a whole thing. There's like Egypt. It's, uh, it's a really complicated plot line, but I was in love with Kim Cattrall. I was in love with this mannequin so much so that it was like nine years old walking around Macy's, like talking to mannequins. Regardless, I was like, I would sit there and have these fantasies. I'd be like, and then Kim Cattrall, I'll meet her at the Dillard's here in Kansas and then we'll fall in love and then I'll get my motorcycle license and we'll drive off into the sunset. Like those are the fucking weird kid thoughts you have. I mean, still very probably weirder than most kid thoughts, but I was very specific with my weird kid thoughts. But this is so childlike. And I will say, you know, somebody in the cat or somebody revolt, you know, somebody in this world did tell me, and I've told you guys before is that Raquel sometime in October said, Oh, if this is going to, how it's going to be Tom, you might as well stay with Ariana. Like she was pushing Tom to do this because she felt he wasn't doing this potentially quick enough or, you know, like we've got to get this going. And so he, she would, you know, express unhappiness with how Tom was treating her wild. And Andy goes, it's incredible how many signs of the two of you she ignored from you and Tom being out at the Abbey to Tom not um, not coming back from the barbecue. And they flash the videos of those experiences. And Andy continues, she rode for you every time because you were her friend. And Raquel shakes her head. Yeah. Yeah. And Andy goes, "When's it? it's interesting because Tom said to me that he felt like maybe she didn't want to know. Was that something that the two of you were telling yourselves? Maybe she knows, but she's in denial about it somehow. And Raquel goes, it seemed that way. Kind of like, oh, well, now we got the pins and batteries and this lady can't, we're fucking right in front of her and she's not even noticing. Dumb, dumb Ariana. Like how much more obvious can we make it, dude? You know, like, I mean, like this is, like, Tom's like, dude, I fucked her in the house. Ariana was sleeping in the other room. How is she not knowing, dude? I, I, this is so fucking crazy. I'm like, it seemed that way. Andy goes, it seemed that way. Okay. And Andy's like, gee, like you can tell Andy's getting into some dark territory. Raquel's like, she never pressed about it. She never confronted me about it. She didn't, from what I know, from what Tom's told me, that she didn't like question him too much about it. Just believe it, like face value, what he would tell her fucking bitch <laughs> how fucking dare her believe this man and she rolls her eyes She's like i don't know that's goofy and he goes that kind of sounded like you're blaming her and andy's like and Raquel says, i mean at the time i think that was my mindset Andy has an extremely pained look on his face and Raquel continues and i now know that she really did want to know and it was very deceitful I'm very ashamed of it. <laughs> She's like, I know now that she would have liked to know that her, her boyfriend was cheating on her and raw dogging me potentially. And Andy goes, she found something on Tom's phone. She called you and confronted you. What was that conversation like? Um, it was a good connection, I guess. AT&T is really good over, you know, she goes, it was a lot of pain that I felt. Wow. This is the first reference to saying you can feel something, Raquel. Amazing. 
she begged me to tell her what had happened. And at this point, and she smiles really big again. She's like, we were going to tell her. We just wanted to get our stories straight. And she does the quotation marks. Okay. And she's like, basically, because he felt like it would hurt her if she knew how long this had been going on. And Andy goes, uh, by getting your story straight, you were going to maybe truncate how long it had been going on or something. Yeah. And Andy goes, okay. Uh, instead, she wanted specifics right there on the phone. Correct. So you told her the truth. I told her the truth. And she said, thank you for telling me because Tom would have never told me the truth, which is so sad. And Andy goes, did Tom prep you for the reunion? Raquel's like, we have obviously been talking about the reunion and preparing for what to expect and kind of how to approach things. And yeah, we've definitely been talking about the reunion, like pretty much the entire time that we've been talking. Yeah. Yeah. And she giggles. This is an additional scene in the Peacock version. Andy goes, both you and Tom have said you need to take a pause right now. Kind of like Dorinda Medley. Uh, you need to take a little time apart. I can't tell. If that's something you've been told or that Tom told you or your parents told you, because I would assume this is a lonely moment in your life. Uh -huh. So do you think you'll come back to the show? Um, I don't know. It's a question right now. I want to. Um, it's a really sad moment. And I, I at this point, I would hope because so much has happened since this reunion that uh yeah i i really she really needs to rethink this uh and he goes how are you feeling about seeing everyone in a group setting she's like i don't know i'm just preparing for the worst hoping for the best and Andy goes how do you feel about seeing ariana scared but she doesn't look scared she doesn't look anything um now juliana carrozza wrote a note that she felt that this questioning was somewhat fluffy and, you know, is this as hard as Andy's going to get? And I think probably, and I think it's fluffy because, you know, they, they, they had to get her there. You know, they had to promise that it would be fair, that they would not take it easy on her, but it would be fair. You know, they're not trying to pounce, but also we're potentially going to get rougher, potentially not from Andy, but the other cast members. Now, like I said, do not have your, uh, you know, your expectations, temper your expectations. We don't know what this is going to be like. So be, you know, don't expect a lot. But I think from Andy, Andy's very cut and dry. Like, really? Like his facial reactions tell that story. But he is the ringleader. He can't, you know, when it's hard. It's a really tough position to be in. But I'd be curious after the fact, you know, years later, Andy, you know, Andy, I'm sure will write some book. He, he, you know what? Fuck, he might write a book just on Vanderpump Rules one day. Back to the studio. Andy goes, Raquel is here. And ready to join us. Backstage, the producer is like, Bravo, Tango, Bravo, Bravo, get her in. The producer, like, the producer says to Raquel, Jeremiah goes, Ready for this? And he goes, Hey, I think so. I mean, huh, no, I just got to confront it. Like, it was like, you know, my fear of heights. <laughs> I hate flying. Ah, zoinks. And he goes, Because of the restraining order she filed against Sheena, Sheena is now over 100 yards away in her trailer and they cut to the trailer with Sheena wearing the sweatshirt is now it's like, it's still really happening or something. And she has it over her gold dress, her comfy shoes. And she's drinking this can of white claw while watching the reunion. And she lets out this huge sigh. And you can just tell she's like, ah, I'm in here drinking a white claw. I'm mad. I should be out there on stage. I'm good as gold. It is so funny and i know it's like really real but it is so funny the cutaway i was like dying it's like now sheena is in the trailer and then he goes ariana i know you have not seen raquel since you found out about the affair how are you feeling about this and ariana smiles She's like not great and andy goes tom how are you feeling about this and sandoval shakes his head and goes i don't know i don't know <laughs> there's this have you ever seen that show on netflix the tim robinson i think you should leave there was this sketch where this guy's in this like old man makeup in the middle of a mall doing a prank show and he has like 100 pounds of prosthetics and he gets really depressed in the like the prosthetics and he's like i can't move and then he goes sometimes i think i don't even want to be here anymore I don't want to live anymore. It's like, it sounds so dark, but it's so funny. Cause it's like, this dude is doing a prank show. He's in all this makeup, this funny makeup. He's supposed to prank people. And he's like, I don't want to even be here anymore sometimes. And they're like, you mean here in this mall? No, on the planet. Like, this is like, Sandoval's just like, I don't know, dude. He's like beat. And then he goes, well, let's bring her out. And Sandoval mutters, green light, green light. 
Now, this is interesting. Sandoval mutters, green light, green light. And Schwartz reaches into the inside jacket pocket and he pulls out a bottle of pills. And Sandoval goes, what the fuck is that? And Schwartz is like, Xanax. And Sandoval's like, Jesus. And Schwartz opens the lid and shakes a pill out in his hand and pops a pill. And Ariana goes, are you taking E? E, of course, is ecstasy, Molly. You know, there's a lot of names for the you know street drugs, uh, which would be hysterical if Schwartz did pop Molly. He was like, oh, I love you, Katie. Can I rub up on you? Schwartz whispers, Xanax. I have stress. And Andy goes, you're taking Xanax? And Lisa's like, you're taking Xanax now. And then, you know, of course, Ken, oh, I heard Schwartz is giving Xanax to the Jacuzzi of Sandoval. Lisa's like, sorry, Schwartz is like, for stress, or just a half, just a quarter. And James like, you have a pill bottle in your hand, man. Katie is looking incredulous, like, oh, shit. And Ariana's like, you're stressed? Sandoval leans over and says to Schwartz, you can tell people it's none of their business, dude. It's my medication. Schwartz, who appears to be sucking on the pill or something else, says, it's it's like lorazepam. Like, I don't usually take it, but I was like, and I was funny you're taking Xanax. Funny you taking Xanax. And Lisa's like, why are you taking it? And Schwartz is like, want some? And Lisa's like, no, stop it now. Stop it. Schwartz throws the bottle over to Ariana. And Ari's like, Jesus Christ. And Andy mutters to himself, taking Xanax. And Schwartz is like, pass it around. The great, It would be great if the third part of the reunion, everybody's just on the floor. They're just like, oh, my God. I guess. Uh, scared of her. Huh? Okay. But let's go back to the green light, green light. So there's so many like, what does green light, green light mean? Is he muttering that to Schwartz? And then, then so it's like Raquel's on her way out. So green light, green light. Schwartz does this bit with the pill bottle. It's like a carrot top bit. It's a prop bit. But it's also a little funny moment, potentially. It's like cutesy Tom, like, oh, I'm such a puppy dog. Look at me with my huge bottle of Xanax. But was Sandoval giving that green light, green light to Schwartz of like, when I say green light, green light, take that pill bottle out. It'll diffuse the tension a little bit and get off the fact that Raquel's coming out. Or was green light, green light muttered to himself as like, let's go, dude, pump it up, pump it up. Uh, also Raquel is wearing green. So I don't know, maybe he calls her his little green light. I don't know. I'm more apt to believe that it was a cue for Schwartz to pull out the pill bottle. And also this, you know, you know sticking up like it's none of their business, dude. It's my medication. Somebody wrote me that it was cute. that Sandoval was sticking up for Schwartz, but I don't even fucking believe that. I just think, I think it's all just some weird little game he's playing. Um, so I don't truly know the answer to that, but that green light, green light moment is super weird. Um, so uh, Schwartz puts the pills back in his pocket, which, by the way, very big bottle. Um, Schwartz is like, I'll take it. I don't take it every day, like once a month. Lisa's like, why are you taking it now? And Schwartz is like, because I'm nervous. Raquel, waiting to come on, is straightening her dress and then walks out. You could hear a pin drop, like click, 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 little heels. Everyone but Lala and Ariana looks at her. Ariana's just head is just straight forward. And Andy goes, hi, Raquel. And Raquel sits down. Hi, Andy. <laughs> Sandoval dramatically drops his head down to his chest. Next week, it's part three of the event. You know what I got just realized I got scared was it should have said next week on the final part, the, the, the on the third and final part of the Vanderpump rule. He usually will say on the final part, uh, like the, on you know what i'm saying like he said on part three of the van i know it is the final part but it's weird he didn't say it i've got to get a life you guys i'm literally like quibbling to myself i'm like you didn't say this ariana goes these are scenes from next week ariana's like i cried in your fucking arms raquel and you thought i should go fuck her boyfriend and then raquel's like james and lala can't talk because they fucked which by the way this moment right here i am so nutty i paused it like this is a pruder film and i was because i noticed a weird moment if you pause this moment when raquel goes james and lala can't talk because they fucked you see sandoval leaning over with his head directly pointed at raquel kind of like and you see his mouth move like he's almost like this is a line that he's told her to say like get it do it do it do it like watch that moment he's literally like almost like mouthing the line and kind of like yeah get it get it get it, get it when raquel says that Go back and watch. You'll see it. Allie drop. Allie's in a trailer as well. We see Allie drop her mouth to the floor and Lala yells, I wasn't her best friend. Ho is not the same thing. You shut the fuck up. And Sandra's like, you shut the fuck up, Lala. And then Katie at a moment goes, she's a cunt and you're a drunk. That's what happened. 
great line, Katie. Lisa's like, how could you be flirting with Schwartz if you slept with Sandoval? Nigelain. And Sandoval grabs his face with his white fingernails and looks like he's melting. Like, Calgon, take me away. And then DJ James Kennedy's like, I just think it's very incesty and dirty and weird, this whole side of the room. And then Sandoval wet and sobbing and shaking. Oh, yeah, I know that you hate me. And that's okay. I want you to know how we love you. And it seems, you know, it seems real. But also this whole, like, I know that you'll hate me and that's okay. I don't, that's okay. Oh, what? A, oh, thank you. How good of you. You could have said, I know you'll hate me and that's not okay. But you see, you gave her permission to hate you. You know what? Your actions gave her permission to hate you, Nimrod. Ariana's crying. She's like, I just can't think of two worse people. I can't. Raquel is looking on completely expressionless. This is the moment I talked about in the beginning. Everybody, you, you see everybody. Everybody's broken on stage. And, and Raquel's like, did you guys already have lunch? Is there like a snack? I need animal crackers. You guys. Wow. Oh, under three hours. We did it, folks. Uh, there will be a part two where we'll talk about all the Vanderpump news. We'll go over some of the other podcast stuff. We'll just talk. We'll chat. We'll do a little so bad it's good after dark. But you guys, I hope this was entertaining for you. I hope uh, this walked you through properly. Uh, this has been this has been one of the great joys of my life to do this with you guys. So thank you for being here as always. I hope you have the best weekend ever. What do we always say? Drink something good, eat something great, hang out with somebody you love, take some time for yourself, be with your family, uh, dance dance like no one's watching, or sing karaoke like uh, you're at a Tom Sandoval in the most extras concert, read something, watch something great, you know, just sit in silence, whatever it takes to get you through to Monday, where we're going to do this all over again. So listen to part two right now if you want to. You can also watch this on YouTube. Go subscribe and that five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and over on the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash so bad it's good. We recapped the first episode of Selling Sunset uh, season six, episode one with Kate Legaco and I did uh, an hour and 20 minute finale or first part of the reunion of Summer Bummer House and we'll do... Um, I got a Q&A over there that I'm, I am I owe them as well. So there's a lot of episodes over there as well if you want more. Love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.